welcome and good evening, you wonderful dice of all lines. I am Lunar to get and I'm gonna do some more tarot karaoke. It's gonna be Miracle Man by Ozzy Osbourne. This is about 40 years ago this song came out. Main point is that really big on the news back then. A lot of these televangelists just getting caught doing, you know, stealing money from the church and basically just just lying, just treating people like shit, being self-righteous, and only caring about just making a quick buck. Like the way, like, yeah, it's like credit cards accepted. It's, and I'll say this, it's good to give to a church you believe in. If there's a preacher or a pastor that, you know, you actually know them, you agree with them, they're actually doing stuff to help people, yeah, you know, you should definitely, but you shouldn't feel that you have to give. And after all, it does say in the Bible, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> and main thing is this, you should give because you actually know that the money you're going to give is going to be used for what you want it to be used. And a lot of these televangelists really just didn't give a shit about God or anything like that. It was just one or two ways. It's either they didn't give a shit about God at all and they just wanted to get rich. Or they were just completely consumed by self-righteousness. And like I, I know some preachers and pastors and all that who literally only read the Bible because they have nightmares of going to hell. Some do it because they feel they have to. Some do it because they make money. Some do it because... Hell, I had one guy tell me that he did it because he wanted to be able to manipulate people. He straight out admitted it to me. Granted, we were all at a party together. It was actually a guy I had met back when I was younger several times, which is weird. Granted, I say younger, and the last time I talked to this guy, which is the t meeting I'm talking about right here, which was like, what? How long? Like, 12 years ago? Because I'm 34 right now. So I think I was 22 back at that time. Let's see. I think the very first time I'd ever met this guy, I, I was a little kid. He was maybe a couple years older than me. I think it was back when I was real, real young. Anyway, so I was outside at a picnic table playing with some troll dolls, you know, pretending like they're Goku and stuff like that. They're like they're more like action figures. They're not like the little glamorous troll dolls that are today. Which, I mean, there's nothing wrong if you're playing with those dolls. It's just, I want you to know they're different. Like, mine were like pirates and knights and stuff. So, I'd be out at like a picnic table or something, playing with those. I was a little kid. Anyway, this one guy came up to me. I actually tried to hit me with a fucking axe. Which, you know... Anyway, I cracked him in the head. He ran away. It was like, what, maybe seven or eight years old or something? I don't know. Maybe younger? I can't fucking remember. Anyway, I didn't see him for a few years after that. Next time I met him, I didn't even recognize him. He was a guy playing a guitar in a band. He was like 13 or something at that time. Didn't know it was the same person. But his hair growing out, 
There's already starting to grow a bit of a beard, even though being 13. I saw that, I'm like, okay, pretty cool music. Met him again a few years after that. And... Yeah, he'd grown his hair even longer, like down to his fucking ass. And... Yeah. And I was... Talking a bit, and... I recognized him, of course, from that one time I saw him when he was 13. But apparently he remembered me from back when he had first met me. And he had mentioned that. And I was like, oh. Anyway, so I didn't really want to talk to him after that. And so just sort of left that area. And just didn't really want anything to do with that situation. Met him again, I think, when I was 22. We're at... A friend of mine wanted to go to this one party at a... A house that actually used to be part of the Underground Railroad. They were pretty sure it was haunted as shit. The person whose house that was an old... Haunt, and of course, since it's from the Underground Railroad, it was a really old as shit. But this guy was basically... What? 19? No. No, he's like 24? Damn, memory sucks. Um, okay. Well, if he was born in... Because I remember him talking about that. Okay, he's 26. 26. Anyway, so this guy's 26. And my friend knows him, so we go over there. Of course, they got music playing on a bunch of computer stuff. That's, like, really expensive music for, like equipment for that time, but apparently this guy's family was loaded to where this is like a four-story fucking building that's been around for like a couple hundred fucking years. It's old as shit. It's like four fucking stories. And they're like, but apparently he's allowed to live in this house by himself, a four-story building It's like a fucking mansion. And he basically lives there by himself, doesn't have to pay any of the bills. I was like, holy shit. Though apparently it's like haunted as fuck. Won't go into details on that, but still. And it's just... Anyway, there was like 20 people there, so... And at least at one time. From throughout the night, people came and went. But there was usually at least 20 some odd people there at a time. Though there was, it was a big ass fucking building, so sometimes there was a person or two in a room off by themselves. You can guess what a bunch of people in their early 20s are probably doing in a situation with a lot of drinking and people of both genders. Me? I'm mainly just there because my friend was there. And I was usually the person who made sure he didn't fucking drink too much or get his ass hurt. Because sometimes he'd be a little reckless and. So I'd have to actually, you know, step in and try to make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Anyway. I remember the... A few renovations they had made in the building were a bit weird. But... The, the fourth floor was nothing but billiards table. Like, it had more billiards table, like more pool tables, than I've seen in most bars. And it was on the fourth floor. How the fuck do you get pool tables on the fucking fourth floor? Anyway, while I'm at that party, mainly just trying to socialize, talk to people, you know, I try to be socially interactive. Yes, I'm terrible at it. But I swear I'm better at it, you know, in person. The whole point of this YouTube channel is I can just drop the filter and whatever fucking idea pops in my head, I can share it with you motherfuckers. I don't want to have to worry about social stigma about how people look at you and shit, or that, oh no, I said this one thing wrong, so now someone's going to come up behind me, kick me in the back of my knees, then slam my face into the ground, and then all of a sudden put their arms around me, and then start trying to choke me out. You know, you don't have that situation. You know, here, 
most I'll probably get is a hateful comment. Like, oh no, you don't believe in God enough, or you believe in God too much, or blah, 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 or you're not part of this group, or you won't do this, or you won't do that, and it's like, people are fucking violent. I don't like it. Which is weird, because I like movies like Hellraiser, I like violent video games, I like violent movies, I read violent literature, I read stuff like Edgar Allan Poe, and, and of course, I read the Bible, and I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the Lord of hosts, you know, I believe in the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses, I believe in Jesus, I accept him as my Lord and Savior, but there are things I disagree with in the Bible. Like, I agree that the Bible is real, and it is the actual history of the world. That being said, I do disagree with how certain people are about it. And, of course, like, I've debated myself whether or not I should start a playlist of me reading the Bible. And whether or not the playlist should just be me straight up just reading it, or me, like, going into each verse talking about my own thoughts and feelings. Now, I know one thing I feel very strongly about that a lot of other people, particularly religious people, have disagreed with me about. And this is like a lot of preachers at churches kind of have had issues with me because I would ask questions about things. And I would be very analytical. And they're like, just accept it. But here's the thing. On the one hand, I don't need to have faith in shit. Because here's the thing. Does it really count as faith if I actually know God is real? And again, I mean, really the experience is that it's just, it's things that have happened in my life that are not exactly normal and things that I've seen and experienced. But of course, some people could just say, well, maybe you're just fucking schizophrenic. And who knows? I mean, I'd be hard-pressed to fucking prove fuckers wrong. Main point being is this. I've seen and witnessed things that, to me, prove the existence of the supernatural. And of lots of other things. Now, that being said, I've always been a person to try to avoid such things, because... Despite being extremely fucking depressed, I'm not suicidal. Despite the fact that I've probably contemplated and thought about suicide every single day of my life since my earliest memories, like since my earliest memory, I've thought about it. I've considered it. But I don't. And of course, there are sometimes I am extremely sad, where I am emotionally really, really upset. Hell, I don't think I can remember the last time I actually laid down on my bed and just didn't start fucking crying. That being said, I've never hurt myself, I've never attempted to hurt myself, I've never attempted to end myself. Granted, I am clumsy as fuck, and I've walked into walls, I've walked into stop signs, I literally could trip on fucking air, and even though I'm a fucking Eagle Scout, I have no sense of fucking direction. Like, put me in the fucking woods with a compass, apparently I can read that shit okay, but have me drive me down a road trying to understand a map while going 80 miles a fucking hour on a freeway or a big fucking city I won't know where to fuck go I have no sense of fucking direction I need GPS at all times I need the Skyrim clairvoyance spell in all video games and in real life even sometimes my thoughts and sometimes my mind will be like 8 different tracks and I can't stay on any of them like hell this video is supposed to be like a short introduction of like 30 seconds, and then I do a terrible karaoke cover of Miracle Man by Ozzy Osbourne. By the way, if you're not familiar with this picture, this is Oscus. He is a religious person from the Berserk anime or manga. I it became a bit CG at some spots, but I still appreciate it was animated. Though I do like HBI 2K's version of you know his Berserk Bridge. Though he's more known for his Yu-Gi-Oh! bridge stuff. I know I'm going a bit long-winded here. But the main thing is I've been a bit analytical about religious things quite a bit. And I'll read everything. Like, I've, like I said, I've met religious leaders who literally only read the Bible because they're scared of going to hell. 
which I mean, it's an understandable fear. If if your thoughts were on, you know, going to a place where you are immortal, but you're going to be tortured forever, I imagine you'd be very afraid of it. I mean, it's certainly a place I wouldn't want to go. I don't think anybody would want to go there. I mean, at the same time, the whole point of it seems dumb. Because here's the thing. What is accomplished by the existence of hell? It'd be one thing if you decided, okay, there are people that didn't want to be around God, so they went to a different area. That's fine. But what is the point of making somebody immortal just to fucking torture them for eternity? Why? What is the point? What? Why? How? What is accomplished? It's kind of like the idea of torture. You know, I mean, torture is either used as a means of control or of getting people to tell, say, tell you what you want to hear, you know, to give you information. But here's the thing. If you're trying to get information out of somebody, they're not going to tell you the truth. They're not going to tell you, like, oh, where, what are the access codes and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be, they're going to tell you whatever it takes to make the pain stop. Two, is it's used as a means of control. I mean, heck, back in, you know, olden days, when they had public executions, one, let's be honest, we're all sick fucking bastards. I mean, if there was a public execution being held in the middle of any city we all lived in, as long as we weren't scared that we ourselves would be next, we'd go to watch that shit. It's fucked up, but I think the song Vicarious by Tool really puts it to... I mean, there's a reason we do like horror movies. It's just... And me, I'll read anything and everything regardless of subject matter. But... Here's the thing. And sometimes you had to go to that shit in the past, otherwise you would be next. Because there are times in the Bible even where it lists that they had meetings. That they told everyone in the city to go somewhere. And anyone who didn't show up, the meeting was about, Hey, everyone, here's a sword. We're all going to murder everyone who didn't come here. Regardless if they're your friends or family or all that. Like, what the fuck? And there's a lot of situations. Heck, I think I talked about it briefly in a couple live streams. And it's just... It's just, what the fuck? And it's just... I'll say this. I believe in God. I do love God, I respect God, and I appreciate everything in regard to Jesus. Then again, I can also understand part of that may be my upbringing, part of it may be some psychological damage and trauma, part of it may be an honest opinion that at some point I feel that if I ever do actually think to myself that God isn't real or Jesus isn't real, that Jesus will fly down from heaven and beat me to death with a wrench. A very, a very, um, specific example, but not the only one. So obviously, I'd imagine from an outside perspective, anyone who, heck, even any people who do believe in God would probably listen to that and be like, Lunar D8 probably should see a therapist. And I'm like, that's expensive. And... I don't really think I can afford that. And even then, like, I'm pretty sure at the end of the day, spending a few hundred dollars on some shit to talk to some person in a stuffy office who really doesn't even give a shit about me, who won't even be paying attention, and will either either not give a shit and be like, okay, I'm, like all I all I will be to them is a fucking ATM. They're not going to care about my problems. They're not going to care about my feelings. They're not going to have any helpful information to give me. They're just going to see me as a fucking wallet. All I am is a fucking paycheck. It's not like I'd find a fucking therapist that would actually care about me as a fucking person. Let alone listen to what I have to say and actually respect my opinion and actually, you know, try to understand where I'm coming from. And it's just... There are a lot of things in the Bible that I do disagree with. And I... 
here's the thing. I've never really understood the idea of racism or people hating people for being different. Like, here's the thing. I don't give a shit what language somebody speaks or what dialect they use. I mean, granted, it might be harder to communicate, but I'll still try. But it doesn't mean they're any different of a person. They still have thoughts and feelings just like everybody else. It's just harder to communicate. And I'm just hard. It's difficult enough for me to communicate with people that speak my own language. Hell, it's difficult for me to communicate with myself. Fuck. Sorry, I had to burp a little bit. But I'm just saying. It's just. It seems like everybody in the world fucking hates each other. Hell, here lately in 20, it's 2021. Technically, it's Christmas, 5:30 in the morning, and. It's just, I don't know, I don't understand why people have issues with each other. I mean, hell, even the Christian religion is divided. I mean, you have different sects of Catholicism and the Protestants. I was raised as an apostolic myself, which I guess the best way to describe it, apostolic is a type of Protestant, but it'd be probably closest to being described as being Baptist. Think of it like a Southern Baptist sort of thing. The church I went to was an all-black church, which might sound odd because I am honestly probably whiter than Casper the fucking ghost. Partly because I am a naturally pale person. Two, perhaps my health kind of sucks. Don't want to really go into detail on that. And three, um, I work third shift. I hardly ever see the fucking sun unless I have a fucking day off. I, or I have errands to run. But, and I usually work long-ass shifts to where they're... Someday, like a lot of days, I would go to work, even during the summer where the days are longer, or even when it's nighttime and winter, where I would go to work and it would be daylight, and I'd work through the night, and I'd leave work, so I'd be going to work and the sun be not even setting yet, and I'd be leaving work and the sun had already risen. So most of the time I'm awake, you know, I'm inside a fucking factory, you know, with my knees and my shoulders and my back telling me that I'm pushing my body way too fucking hard and I'm probably going to blow out one of my fucking knees or tear a tendon in my fucking shoulder. Because half the time it feels like everything fucking hurts. And half, most of the time I feel like I'm going to pass out at any time. And yet despite no matter how tired I am all the fucking time, my good friend sleep never seems to fucking visit me. And if he does, he never stays long unless I encourage him to stay around with fucking ASMR cat girls. It's like, here, let's listen to this. So I can fucking rest. Sleep is important, motherfuckers. It's very important. Anyway. I, I'm not really sure where I was trying to go with this. Oh, yeah, I was talking about that one guy at the... That underground roundhouse road. Well, Roadhouse. There's there's more Roadhouse. Now I'm just talking about Family Guy. Roadhouse. Is that a good Peter Griffin impersonation? Roadhouse. Kish! That's the sound of that kick from the back. Roadhouse. What what are some other things that Peter Griffin says? Damn it, Meg! Now that's more like No. Oh, it's like I combine Stewie Griffin and Scooby Doo. Roadhouse! Compared that's the only thing by Peter Griffin I can say. That sounds even remote like Peter Griffin. Everyone's out there like, no! No! You're not doing voice acting right! This is why no one would want you to voice act in a cartoon. Or a bridge series. But, the main point I say is this. One, Merry Christmas, everybody. And if you're Jewish, Merry... Happy Hanukkah. I was about to say Merry Hanukkah, but I'm like, that's not the correct way to do that. But... Yeah. Feliz Navidad. And happy any holiday you believe in. Or respect. Most importantly is, you know, everybody should be out there, you know, spending time with their families. And just... I don't know. Just be nice to each other. I want everyone to be nice to each other. So one thing I really understood is just like, I understood the capacity for it inside the human mind. I mean, we all have it. I'm not going to say I'm any different than everyone else. You know, there's always those thoughts of violence that everybody has. Some more than others. 
but it's always your choice about what you act on and how you treat each other. I know no matter how sad or angry I feel at times, I'll still be nice to people. Unless, you know, they're actually physically attacking me, at which point, you know, self-defense. And then, it's just, I don't give a shit, like, what language a person speaks, what country they come from, what religion they believe in, you know, what gender you are, what sexuality you are, you know. And I don't care if you're, you know, left or right on the political spectrum or anything. I mean, hell, capitalism, socialism have one basic thing in common. The people that espouse those, you know, systems of economics believe it's for a good reason. What, Regardless of what side you're on, it's not like either side's wanting to do it because they think it's going to hurt people. Both sides think it's the best way to save lives. Both sides think it's the best way to help people. So, and honestly, I'm not qualified to really talk about how economics work, or, you know, really anything. I'm just a guy who is just, plays video games and anime, does some terrible Let's Plays and comedy videos that really count more as cringe than comedy, and I'm mainly just trying to be a part of YouTube community, and... I'm not even trying to make any money off of this. I don't plan to ever partner with YouTube regardless. Unless, like, YouTube forces me to partner with them or some shit. But, I can have a million fucking subscribers. I really have no interest in partnering with YouTube. I just want to rant with my fucking computer. You know, one, it's a way of being social that doesn't require me to filter my thoughts or anything out of concern that the person I'm talking to might suddenly violently attempt to murder me for having a disagreement with them. But also, it just means I can just... Plus, I mean, it's like this. You don't cry in public, because then everyone looks at you like you're a little bitch. So, but... Main point is... I don't know. I keep getting lost in thought here. I'm sorry. But, like, I know that one guy that I was talking about earlier, that when I saw him at the railroad house, that he apparently had done some college stuff on religious studies and church stuff because he planned to become a preacher. And I was like, okay. And then talking to him, because I didn't recognize him first, because he had actually gained a lot of weight, because when I last seen him with the guitar and stuff, you know, he was a super skinny, almost anorexic motherfucker with a beard and long hair. And his beard was like a little skinny little mustache and goatee. This guy had a giant fucking lumberjack beard and was completely fucking bald and was like 300 fucking pounds. And it was just... I didn't recognize him at all. Halfway through the conversation, though... Somebody comes up to me and mentions the guy's name. I don't react to it because I'm like, okay. But, uh, okay, I know it's that guy now. I'm like, oh, shit. But, I ignore it. I play it cool. I stay social. Everybody I keep talking to everyone. But anyway, at some point I ask the guy. Because at this point, that guy didn't remember me anymore, or at least didn't seem to care. But we're all having conversations. I asked him, okay, why did you, like, what made you, like, interested in pursuing being a preacher? And he literally said he was fascinated with cults, that he wanted to be a cult leader, that he literally studied to become a church preacher because he wanted to be a cult leader, because he wanted to manipulate people, because he wanted to be in a position of power. And I'm like, holy shit. And it's just, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? But like I said, not all preachers are like that. Not all pastors are like that. Some out there are literally just trying to do what they think is good. And they're trying to pursue their interests. And they're trying to help others. 
but it's just there's like take the televangelists except think of Ozzy like the guy basically was caught like laundering money doing illegal things even just you know doing stuff with you know prostitutes all that and it's just like this I'm not really judging people for doing that like really I as long as everybody's safe in regard to why can't I fucking remember I already have the lyrics pulled up on my phone but I I think it was like Jimmy Buffett or something because I know Jimmy's the center oh by the way here's another thing the part where it says where is it the part of the lyrics that says because he's not our Jimmy sinner because he's so obscene you know, before that was said, I don't know where he'll come from, and I don't know where he's been, but he's not our Jimmy Sinner. But I always thought that lyric was, but what matters is he here is he's here's now. But what matters is he's here now. So, like, I don't know where he's been, but what matters is he's here now. But apparently I always misheard that. So, I'm going to look that up real quick. I should remember that. I know I used to know that at some point. I think it's Jimmy Buffett. I'm probably... Now that's a fucking country singer. You dumbass. Or is it a... Who's Jimmy Buffett? Sorry, I'm reading. He's a uh, restaurant owner. Margaritaville? Cafes? Different person. So who's the Jimmy from the Ozzy song? What the? What the fuck is Google Lens? It's not what I was trying to click on. Um, let's see, Ozzy, Miracle Man. Jimmy. Jimmy Swagger. I should have fucking remembered that. But yeah, if I remember right, he did a bunch of stuff like, you know. Well, I don't want to say without being completely right, but I have some ideas. Apparently, every time I try to hit the space button, I actually hit a fucking letter V instead. Jimmy Lee Swagger, American Pentecostal televangelist. From 1971. Apparently I can't spell this with this shit. Cause yeah, I remember that like you know, Jimmy Swagger was like talking like how you know Black Sabbath and everything was you know corrupting America's youth and you know it was a bad influence on people. Music's music. But yeah, apparently like was really trying to end rock music. Yeah, but basically goes in detail here. You guys can look it up yourself. But, anyway, he did a bunch of fucked up things. But, and like I said, it's just, like, I believe in God, but there's things in the Bible I disagree with, and I've been... Sometimes preachers would have an issue with me because I'm overly inquisitive, and sometimes because 
I would just have disagreements with them. Like, I would disagree with their viewpoints and things. And usually, you know, preachers and pastors don't like you disagreeing with them. And if they do, they usually see it as an opportunity to sort of make you into a straw man to, like, sort of prove, like, that they're right by making you look as dumb as possible. And really, I don't think I have the charisma or oratory skills. Plus, I just tend to be nervous in general when talking in front of me. Well, when I very first started trying to do these videos, I was nervous just talking to my fucking computer. But, and in general, I really just don't like talking about political or religious things, just because most of the time I'm just exhausted and I just, I just don't have the energy for it. Already worn out all the time, anyway. Plus, I get off topic. I mean, listen, there's a fucking 36 minute long video that's supposed to just be me singing Ozzy Osbourne. I can't stay on topic. How the fuck are you gonna have a conversation with me when I can't even remember what the conversation is? Fuck. I kinda wanna look at what's suggested underneath this. Judas Priest, a lot more Ozzy. Things I don't even know about. Whatever. Um, yeah, just... Like, there are some good preachers out there. There are some good pastors out there. And there's nothing wrong with giving to a church. You know, that's good. If you want to give to a church, that's fine. And of course, you know, if you believe in a pastor, you believe in a word... Because usually that, you know, the money you give to a church should be used for, you know, paying for the maintenance of that church. Or for helping the, you know, the needy. You know, people that are poor, or starving, or homeless. Or cancer research. I don't know. But, it's just there are a lot of people out there that just do it because they want a position of authority. They don't even care about God. They don't even care about what they're preaching. They literally just want people to praise them, to say, oh, look, this is the great televangelist. This is the great pastor. They just want to be a fucking celebrity. They just want to be praised like the fucking Pharisees from the fucking Bible. Heck, that's the best way to describe a lot of people nowadays, either Pharisees or Sadducees. Because Pharisees were people who just, they just, they didn't, they just cared about being seen as being the pious, the holy ones. They just want to be seen as fucking celebrities. As like, ooh, look at us. We're perfect. We follow every single solitary possible rule. And we're all perfect and clean. And then we have the second Sadducees that basically that was a short... They didn't believe in it. Uh, you know, there was ever going to be a messiah. And that when you die, that's it. That's... And there's more to it. I mean, I'm pretty sure an Orthodox Jew would have a much better understanding of this. You know, at the same time, I mean, you have the same parallel in Christianity and in every religion. Heck, even in atheism. You might say, how does atheism have the same thing as Christianity? Simple. The same way some Christians feel the need to go out and force their views on other people to where everyone has to believe in God and everyone has to believe in Jesus and everyone has to believe in Jesus the exact same way they do I mean there's, there's a reason we got the fucking Spanish Inquisition okay you know there's a reason stuff like Mosgus from Berserk resonates so deeply with us because here's the thing Mosgus from Berserk there were people like this in every era of time and usually the only thing stopping them is, you know, that it would be legally wrong and they'd probably go to prison or make them look bad. But there's a lot of people that if they had the ability to go out and start lynching people of any group, whether it be white, black, Christian, Jew, uh, gay, straight, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can have people attacking any group. And, and I'll say this. I'm very egalitarian that I feel everyone should be equal and everyone should be treated with kindness and respect, but I see a lot of people that go to these, uh, that do these whole 
it doesn't even matter what side you're on of it. It seems like they're, it's not even about equality for them. It's about supremacy. It's about people trying to kill each other. It's like, it literally feels like you're seeing a Nazi rally from the past, or a KKK shit. And like I said, it doesn't matter what side you're on. White versus black, gay versus straight, Christian, Jew, Muslim, atheist. It just seems like everyone just cares about their side. The easiest way to put it is fucking Cartman. Think about Eric Cartman from South Park. There was one episode where Kyle, like, dyes his hair and shit in his sleep, so that Cartman thinks he's a fucking... He thinks he's a ginger. Which, again... Now I'm just thinking about really sexy Irish girls. Yep, I'm thinking about boobies. So, again, I can't stay on top of we're starting, we're starting to try to have a serious conversation here, but and then we went to Eric Cartman, and now I'm just thinking about naked Irish girls. You know, you guys are, like, just big titties, red hair, and like I said, just... Anyway. Main point is this, Eric Cartman. What, he used to, like, be like, oh, gingers don't have souls, and like all that stuff where he'd like, you know, hate everybody and all that shit. But once he thought he was a ginger, he then started a movement for the gingers to kill everyone who wasn't that. It's like, what? And that's the thing, some people literally do not care what side they're on. They'll just go for their side. And they'll usually will try to mention things that sound good, if it benefits them. But the moment it doesn't benefit them, they'll turn their back on it. And that's the thing, this is like, there are some people that complain about double standards for one thing, but rather than seek actual equality, they'll actually push for double standards in their favor. And it's just, or like people that go out their way to get as much privilege as possible, but then still claim that they're oppressed. And like I said, this is every group of people. It doesn't matter where you are in the world or what era you're in. It's just, there are people that literally do not care about what side they're on. They don't care about others, they just care about themselves. And they're just very aggressive about it. I mean, and it's the same thing with religious groups. I mean, there are people that are Christians, Jews, Muslims, atheists, who literally don't care about other people's beliefs. The same way there are Christians who will go around and try to force God on people, there are also atheists who will go around and try to force the view that there is no God on people. I mean, regardless of whether you believe there is God or not, you shouldn't try to force those views on another person. I mean, I've had conversations with Jews, Muslims, atheists, and I think usually the main thing I talked with some atheists now is just looking up the stars and just, we both agree, just, it just, it's very beautiful to look at the stars at night. But it's just, I never really liked the idea of anyone trying to force a belief on somebody. And... I mean, I can understand why people get upset about things. I can understand. And like I said, there, it's just like there are some Christians that are over-evangelical about their beliefs in God to where they, are, they lose sight of compassion. There's also people that are atheists that are just so consumed with that thought that they start not even thinking about Christians as people. And it's just, it's so easy for people to become polaroids. I mean, look at today's society. I mean, cancel culture is fucking everywhere. And it seems like something that started as an idea of trying to be understanding of other people's feelings is now an issue of you can't say anything if it disagrees with the main public. Like, we should still be able to have open discussion with one another. It's just... Like, we should be able to have open discussions with each other without people being aggressive toward each other. Everyone should be able to respect each other's viewpoints and be able to talk. 
but I don't know. <sighs> Main point I'm trying to say is that I believe in God, but I don't think it's necessary to force that belief on other people. And I don't think anyone should like go to a hell or anything like that. Like, what's the point of it? Like, because here's the thing. It'd be one thing, like, if you are literally murdering people and, you know, okay. But then, even then, there's no point in, like, torturing you for eternity. This person's really such a threat to the rest of existence that, that you can't contain them somewhere that isn't, you know, lighting them on fucking fire. And... Then just have them not exist anymore. Like, what's the point of someone being eternal and living forever just to be tortured? Why? And here's another thing. If you take a good person, a good person, any human being in the entirety of the universe, any sentient being, and you put them through a situation like fucking hell, you will literally turn them into a monster. You could literally take the nicest person on the planet that has ever lived. You can take any human being, any one of us, and put them into actual hell from the perspective that it is portrayed to us. You will turn them into a monster. You can literally turn any sentient being... Because, I mean, this. I mean, yeah, if a hu human being grows up about any challenges, they become a, a spoiled brat. And they don't really have any empathy. I mean, the whole point of pain is, you know, one, so we don't damage ourselves, and two, so we can have empathy for others. At the same time, while on the one hand, if you don't experience any pain ever, you don't seem to care about others. On the other hand, if you experience too much, it fucking breaks you. And it makes you psychotic, or just, you know, there are limits to what a human mind can handle. And it's kind of like exercise. You don't just go to a gym and try to lift a fucking 500 pound bench press with no fucking assist or anything without even ever having done a fucking push-up. In the same regard, you don't go there and do a thousand push-ups in a fucking row. Nor do you, like, push yourself for hours every day, day after day. You know, the human body, you know, in order to get stronger, you have to train, but you also have to rest. Also, it's important to look at people that do have success. I don't. I can't seem to build any muscle worth of shit. My body doesn't seem to produce very much testosterone. I'll be honest. I would like to look more like fucking Yujiro Hanma. And I feel like I'm not manly enough. So. And I feel like, in general, that I'm just not a very attractive person. And that, you know. Whether it be physically, the way my body is, or, you know, just my personality, I don't feel like I'm a person that anybody does respect, or would, or even could respect. But that's fine. That's just who I am. It would be nice. But at the same time, it's just... Again, I don't know what the point of this video is. I guess the main thing I'm trying to say is this. I believe in God. I believe in having, you know, arguments constructively with people. But you shouldn't try to force your views on people. Plus, on the one hand, you have religious people who literally just care about making money or being in a position of power or being seen as the higher people in society. And you have other people who don't care about that position, but they are so overly devoted to their faith. Like, take Mazgus from Berserk. I think that's the two... Jimmy Swaggart would be the one line where Jimmy Swaggart really didn't care. He just cared about making the money. And he was a big fucking hypocrite about the shit. Whereas the other extreme of that is Mosgus. He didn't care about money. He was, and Mosgus definitely isn't a fucking hypocrite. He is 100% you 
know, on his belief. He is 100% honest. And I doubt Mazgus ever once told a lie in his entire existence. You know, as, you know, being a fictional character in an anime. That being said, the way the character is, that character has never told a lie, never done that anything that they would even find remotely hypocritical. But yet there are people like this in real life, in every era of time. And it doesn't matter. Like, there are some people that will just gravitate to this stuff. And... And like I said, there's really no point of a hell. Like, what's the point of torturing somebody? You're just going to make them turn into a demon. You can take the nicest person in the world, you're just going to turn them evil. You're just going to cause them so much pain that they have a fucking psychotic break. And, you know, at that point, you just, you're just breaking a person's mind. Like, what's the point of that other than to fucking break them? Like, what is the purpose of hell other than to torture people? Like, there's nothing constructive to be done about that. There's... Because here's the thing, it's one thing to punish somebody if it's your hope that it will save them. That you're like, okay, you punish somebody, like, you give them a ticket for speeding because you don't want them to speed because they're in a car wreck, kill people. Same way DUIs. You give people tickets for drinking because you want to discourage them from drinking alcohol and driving because it'll likely kill them and kill other people. You're trying to save lives. You're trying to help people. You're trying to make them happier because they're going to be happier if they don't get in a fatal car accident and die. You know, I think most people would be happier if they're like, okay, if you're given option A of you die in a fatal car wreck, option B, you get seriously injured in a, in a car wreck, or C, you mow down a bunch of people on a fucking sidewalk because you were fucking blitzed, or D, you drive home completely sober and get a bunch of Slim Jims from the gas station and then go home and eat the Slim Jims and play a video game. If you ask people what would make them happier, they'd probably answer option D, because no one got hurt. So, I mean, it's just, there's no, there's no point. There's no point to a hell. Because here's the thing, regardless, even if you are a person who, because here's the thing, it's, it just, like, what's the purpose if you try to look at it logically? Well, you're taking a bunch of people who at worst were, would have been monsters already, but what's the point of torturing a monster? Like, if you're really concerned about it, either find a way to separate it from those that it would hurt, and if you can't separate it, or if just keeping it in separation would just cause too many issues, then just have it cease to exist. I mean, it's not that hard for God to just hakai something from fucking existence. Because here's the thing. I do believe in God. I do believe God created everything. I believe that the Bible is the word of God. And I believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And I believe that God can do anything and everything. And here's the thing. I don't blame God for anything. I don't try to judge God. And, you know, I appreciate that God created me. I am thankful for my existence. I've also received the Holy Ghost, and I have spoken in tongues. But, and I am thankful for that, and that is a great blessing, and I am very appreciative of that. And I find reading the Bible to be a good thing. But I also think it's very important for people to maintain perspective, because there are countless people throughout the time of history who through their belief, whether it be Christianity, Judaism, the Muslim faith, or even straight up a belief in atheism. I mean, heck, are we going to have a war at some point where atheists band together and try to murder all the Christians? I mean, you have groups of Christians in the past who would fucking protest metal bands. 
and you would have groups of churches gather together to burn Harry Potter books. Same way, you'd have groups of atheists gather around to like burn fucking Bibles. And of course you had the Spanish Inquisition and the Holy Wars with a bunch of Christians and Jews and Muslims all killing each other. And it's just like, no one, like, and at that point you couldn't be an atheist because like, well, you don't join a side, they're going to kill you, and then all sides want to kill each other. Then again, there is an old saying, there are no atheists in foxholes. You know, take the trench to World War I, some of like that. If you were in that situation, you're facing death, you're going to be terrified, which is understandable. I mean, nobody wants to die. And if you do, then there are extenuating circumstances that are making your life unbearable. At which point, it's not that you want to die, it's that you just don't want to live. It's, it's not that you want to die. It's just that whatever is going on in your current state of existence is too painful for you. So it's not that you want to die. It's just that you want the pain to stop. So, and a lot of times if you're scared, you will go to any amount of faith that you think will save you. Whether it be a placebo effect of comfort or actually getting actual help. And like I said, I do believe in God, but at the same time, I mean, you take all the things that have happened through history. I mean, it's not like God stepped in to stop World War II. And we did a lot of, there was a lot of things. I mean, from atomic bombs to genocides to just so many people just marching toward each other to kill each other. And plus, I mean, take how many people are actually still dying of starvation. How many people still die of diseases. I mean, I'll say this. I understand to a degree that, you know, you have to step back for somebody to learn to do something on their own. And that by the human race facing struggles, it helps the human race to achieve progress. Usually, the greatest inventions that happen in time usually tend to come from, you know, fear or necessity or just desperation. Granted, people still make advancements anyway, but it's just like a lot of things happen just because people were scared or desperate. I don't know. I'm sorry this is a fucking long-winded video. Not that anybody would ever even want to listen to this. And heck, if anyone ever did click on this, they'd probably listen to 30 seconds and then ignore the rest. Or they'd listen to the whole thing and just try to pick up sound bites to be like, oh yeah, listen to this guy. He's so fucking dumb or crazy or stupid. Oh, he's so fucking stupid. I don't know. It's just... Everything seems so polarizing nowadays, but then it always has been. It's just... We're just more aware of it. It's just, I just don't like the idea of... Anyone hating anyone else for whatever color their skin is, or what they believe in, or gender, or sexuality. That shit just doesn't make sense to me. And I understand there's a degree like, okay, to some degree the human race has to be left to its own devices for people and for us as a race to advance, but given the atrocities that happen with wars and things like murder, rape, and torture, that's not, that's too heavy of a price to pay for the human, human race to evolve. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, you're saying for that greater good, for the human race to become better, all these individuals have to suffer such horrible fates. Like, there are people that are blind, or deaf, or mentally handicapped, or missing limbs. How many people that go to serve in the military? Which, I respect the people that go to serve in the military. And I understand that most of the people that do go to the military are doing it because they want to help. And... And I definitely do appreciate the people that do join the military 
my country to just I like I said you guys sacrifice a lot and you go through a lot of hard work and a lot of struggle at the same time I also feel like the government doesn't give a shit about you guys like I mean how much do people in the military really get paid and I mean how many times do you see a fucking homeless veteran on the fucking street or you know people that lose limbs and shit And it's just, that's horrible. It's just, people are so hateful to each other. But take Mozgus. He's so strong in his beliefs that he loses sight of any kind of compassion or mercy or empathy or understanding. He cares solely for the letter of the law. For him, everything is completely black and white. Anyone that defies his holy scriptures in any way deserve the utmost horrible torture and pain. And it's just... There are people like this. I mean, and usually the concept of torture or death penalty or hell is a means of control. You know, it's fear. And I mean, it works. I mean, I don't want to die. I don't want to have horrible pain. I don't want to go to hell. You know, no one would. Same time, public executions. And it doesn't matter, like, whether it's you know, the guillotine stuff in fucking France back during the French Revolution. Doesn't matter if it's fucking Salem witch trials. And it doesn't matter if it was fucking lynchings in the South. It doesn't matter if it's stories from the Bible or even stories from Greek history. Stories from Persians, the Babylonians, from the Romans. Russia, China, Africa, England, any part of the world, any era, any belief system, there are going to be people that want to have power, and the easiest way to keep people in line with that is to scare the shit out of everybody. And so, take the Salem Witch Trials, it's either just, it's usually just people wanting to scare everybody else in line. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter who you're killing. You just want to scare everybody else. You just kill whoever disagrees with you. And it's just... I don't know. I don't like the idea of people hurting each other. Which is odd, is I enjoy violent movies and violent video games. But for me, it's, it's more about emotional catharsis. In a way that doesn't harm anyone. Like Socrates. If Socrates from Greek philosophy was alive today, he would say video games are the greatest thing that have ever existed. You might say, how? Simple. If anybody is going to hurt somebody in real life, it's because they chose to. It doesn't matter how emotionally upset you are about stuff. You know, if you don't want to, you, you're not going to do so. Like, I tend to be depressed a lot. But I'm not going to ever hurt anybody. The worst thing I'm going to do is make cringy-ass fucking videos on YouTube. And... Somebody else is going to listen to this, and... Maybe it'll resonate with them, and... They'll be like, oh, okay. And they'll at least understand that, hey, somebody else actually has the same thoughts and feelings they do. I don't know, I'm really... It's an hour fucking long and I'm just rambling. I try not to ramble, guys, I try. But... Main point I'm trying to say is, one, Merry Christmas. You know, I'm thankful for the birth of Jesus. I'm thankful for the whole thing on the cross. It's just... One, why was that necessary? Why was it necessary for the whole thing on the cross? 
I understand, like, because here's the thing, I understand it's necessary for the human race to develop, to have things like war and stuff, but I think that's too heavy of a price to pay. Like, all the people that die in a war and all that, it's... It's horrible. It'd be nice if we didn't fight wars. But then again, I sure, hell, sure as hell wouldn't want to take away people's free will or independence and all that. At the same time, I don't want people to kill each other. Like, I feel like if we're going to have any rules of society, it should basically mainly be on the idea of just not hurting each other. <sighs> and here's the thing. It's just like, there are things in the Bible that, you know, I do disagree with. And, like I said, everyone's got their own view of points on stuff. And I'll say this, I believe in God. And if th bad things happen, I don't blame God. And granted, maybe I would like God to be more involved in certain things. But at the same time, I also do have concerns and fears to where my mind does bounce back and forth on certain things. Because no matter what, I always respect God. I always believe in God. I know with 100% certainty that God is real. That's an absolute. But my mind does bounce back and forth between just having a benevolent love for my creator and between being outright terrified of my creator. And it's not that I'm trying to blame God. It's not that I'm trying to insult or judge God. But, and I understand, like, if I were in such a situation, I would be a complete fuck-up. Because I'd be torn between two extremes. Between one, being like an overprotective person of the human race, trying to make no one hurt each other to where no one had to suffer. On the other hand... The moment I started seeing people being fucking pedophiles or some shit, I'd probably start, like, burning entire fucking cities to the ground. Which, yes! It's a bit much. But, like I said, my emotions jump around, and it's, sometimes, I'll feel completely fucking apathetic, to where I have no fucking feelings, and I don't give a shit about anything. And other times, I'll care. And sometimes it'll be excessive amounts of sadness, excessive amounts of anger. Sometimes I'll care a little bit. Sometimes I will care to an extreme degree to where I will have to hide that emotion because I understand it's way too much for what should be socially acceptable for expression in the real world because it would either make people uncomfortable or possibly even cause people to get hurt. And the last thing I'd want to do is actually hurt anyone. I'm just the kind of person that does enjoy talking to people about anything and everything. Like, I've literally gone up to Jehovah's Witnesses and just walked up to them and started having conversations. Hell, there was one Jehovah's Witness that was actually a really cute girl. She had some nice tits, it looked like. And her face was very pretty, and I really liked the way her eyes looked. They just, they seemed to be very... I like bright blue eyes, and they just... She was very pretty. So I started talking to her about Rammstein and death metal and stuff. And, you know, trying to ask her out on a date and for us to hang out and listen to some metal music together. However, there was an older woman, Job Witness, who was not okay with that. And yeah. I, but it's just like... Whether a woman's a Job witness or a, you know, a goth or whatever. Though I did watch a Matrix movie recently, and there are some Asian, hot Asian women in that, wearing fishnets, and that is uh, pretty sexy. Pretty sexy. I don't know. The main point is I don't think anyone should hurt each other. I know in one of my live streams I mentioned like a, there was a rule idea I thought of called 820. Though, it was like eight rules for society that would be the reasons for which why you would ever execute a human being. And 20, that would be like 
just more so suggestions that should never be taken to extremes, but something for people to keep in mind. But I'd only ever written out like 12 of them. I probably have that piece of paper around here somewhere. Is that it over there? Let me look. Like I said, it's supposed to be singing Miracle Man, and I'm just like, not. Let's see, what's this? No, that's... Oh. Okay. This piece of paper is back when I was trying to learn American Sign Language. Alright. That was a way back. Where the fuck did I put that other thing? Somewhere. Anyways, somewhere around here I have a piece of paper. It was... I'll talk about a live stream or something. I still think it's kind of funny, like, I can try to read it. Maybe I'll do a better job of it. I know there was a live stream I did, like, a year ago, where I tried to read, record myself reading a Winnie the Pooh book. And it's just the fact that I was reading it to a computer and not my son was just so fucking depressing to me that the entire video just sounded like me being a sad, angry son of a bitch. Where I basically sounded like I was a fucking demon. Like, the voice of Tigger had never been so fucking terrifying to anyone. And it's just like... It's just like, no matter how much you try to sound... You know, just read it. Just the fact that you're just reading something that you want to be reading to your son. And it's just... Nothing but anger and sadness came out of my voice in that. Though, of course, I've spent plenty of time with my son since then. And... I can read him stories and stuff, and I sound perfectly fine. And he has fun, and he giggles and laughs, and he enjoys story. And of course, nowadays, he can actually, you know, read the stuff to me. And we can talk about, like, different stuff, whether it's a Marvel character or, you know, something with Paul Patrol or something like that, and that's cool. And I enjoy that very much, and he does too. And I'll tell him I love him very much, and I'm very proud of him. And he'll, like, I love you, Dad, and I'm like, I love you too. And I'll give him plenty of hugs and tell him how just how much I love him, how much I'm proud of him. Because he's amazing. I just I remember back before he was even born, I'd actually be telling, you know, I love you to him before he was even born. I remember back when I was married, I did everything I could to be the best husband, best father in the world. Just one of the people that were important to me to know that they were cared about and loved. And I would pretty much tell them I loved them and was proud of them every single day. Of course, you know, divorces happen and things happen in life, but hey, that's just part of life, right? But he's doing good and I enjoy every time I spend time with him and hang out with him and like I said, I can read him stories. I'll sound perfectly normal. And I'll just be happy and smiling because I'll genuinely be happy. And I'll just have a very kind, happy voice because I am. Because I love him very much. I'm very proud of him. But I know one time, like after reading Winnie the Pooh book on the stream, and I was like, wow, just reading to a fucking computer, I sounded so fucking angry and pissed and depressed. Like I was a fucking demon trying to read shit. It's like, okay. I mean, I sounded more normal trying to read the actual Savage Worlds guide from the Pathfinders thing, which is literally a book about hell. It's called Codex and Furnace. I literally read a book about hell and sounded more normal than me trying to read Winnie the Pooh. Tigger had never been more terrifying. <laughs> and yet I can actually sit and read with my son, and I sound completely normal. Then again, there was one time I tried to read the Paul Patrol stuff on the stream, Try to force myself to sound like the way I would with my son. That, that video doesn't exist, you know, because it was just an hour of me crying. And I couldn't even say words anymore. My face was just covered in tears and snot. I'm like, yeah, no, no, we're not having that. That's, that's not going to be posted. Fuck that. But it's just. But I can just read that stuff to him nowadays and just. You know, the fact that I'm reading it to him, and I think I could actually get by actually reading it on stream now, and not 
be that emotionally, you know, torn up about it. Or, you know, it's just... Time does help deal with certain things. And it's just... My fucking PS4 is probably going to go to sleep at this point. I've been just having a pause on Miracle Man by Ozzy for like forever. Right now it's stuck on frame. I have a pause at 3 minutes, 9 seconds, which is exact like wild on the guitar. Which, it's kind of blurry because he's in the middle of like the headbanging thing or whatever. But... Anything I'm trying to say is I just... Like, Moss just has like no fucking passion. Like, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, like, go read the manga, go watch the anime. But there are people like this in every society, in every era, in every belief system. And it doesn't matter if you're a Christian, atheist, Jew, Muslim, anything. There are people like this. And they will outright torture and murder people and think they're doing good things. I mean, take the Spanish Inquisition and the Holy Wars. Those people were out there literally murdering people slaughtering entire families, burning villages to the ground, thinking that God would be happy with them. And it's just... It's just... It's awful to think about that people could be so cruel and violent and still think that that was a good thing. That they were doing the right thing. It's just... And I'll say this. I've met preachers, and like, because I am a religious individual. I believe in God. I have some books on biblical trivia. I have, I've read my Bible a few times through. And it's just, I read just about everything. I read everything put in front of me, and I try to have an open mind about every point of view. And I understand that there are other people that don't believe in that's perfectly fine. That viewpoint is valid. You know, if someone out there is atheist, doesn't believe in any god, or if you're Jewish, Muslim, or that, you know, your viewpoint is valid, and you have a right to think the way you do. I don't have a right to force my views on you. I don't have a right to try to force you to think the way I do. But I do like talking to people and sharing my points of view. I'll respect yours if you respect mine. I don't care if somebody's different than me. I just care if they're an asshole to me or not. If you're nice to me, then nice to you. I, I agree with the Nux Taku thing. I don't know if you guys ever... You know, Nux Taku. He's a YouTuber. And he's pretty cool. He does a bunch of anime videos, anime flex stuff. Just, he's actually a very funny comedian. Whereas me, everything I do is just fucking cringe. And it's either I do really terrible cringe comedy or karaoke... I play video games badly and cuss at them, or I just do random shit because I can't do anything consistently. I just do whatever the fuck pops in my head. It's just... Let's try to lay down for a nap, let's roll around a bit, let's wake up, and just... <sighs> record a video about whatever the fuck just popped in my mind, like whatever I feel like I want to talk about. That. Apparently, the fact that it's Christmas... Is making me think about the religious stuff. Which, I'll say this. I just think everyone, any religious belief, should just respect each other. That everyone should just be kind to each other. I think everyone should just be able to see each other like we're all just people. Now, of course, if somebody's like murdering people or hurting children, then yes, they should die. But in a court of law. Because otherwise... I mean, we'd become like the fucking Wild West again. And that'd be a bit chaotic. I don't... I think that would probably cause more harm than good if everyone just became like fucking vigilantes. So, I mean... It's kind of important just to... On the one hand, let the law and the actual order of society take care of things. At the same time, sometimes society can be fucked up. And sometimes laws can be fucked up. I mean, heck, take slavery. At one point... It was legal for people to own other people. And then again, I mean, slavery still exists. I mean, I'll take other nations and things like that. There are people that do actually still own slaves out there. It's just, you just don't hear about it very much. 
Not that I would have any clue how you would do anything about any of that. I mean, at the end of the day, from my perspective, I'm just a guy who works in a fucking factory, who enjoys rock music, who believes in God, who can't draw or play a guitar worth a shit, and just uses a free version of OBS to record the, the dumbest fucking videos on YouTube. Like, at some point, Guinness World Records are going to contact me, and they're going to give me the world record for the fucking cringiest fucking videos in the world, where you're going to, like, read Ripley's Believe It or Not, and it's going to be a Lunar D8, the most horrible thing to listen to on YouTube. His voice is like epilepsy for your ears. And that's even when he's not singing. When he's singing, it's worse. It's like I, I fucking summon eldritch beings into this universe. Like, you know how Cthulhu horror starts? Me singing. That's what happens. I sing, and all the Cthulhu horrors that exist out. All the eldritch gods hear my voice, and they come to me. Not because I'm special or anything, just because I'm that bad at singing. My voice is that painful to listen to when I try to make it sound musical. So I'm sorry, if you see like a fucking, you know, sky vampire from the Cthulhu lore, which always, anytime I see that, I'm like, I'm reminded how fucking terrifying Mario Brothers would be in real life. Like, take the fucking bloopers, especially in the scenes like where they're flying through the air. I mean, think about that in real life. Imagine if octopuses and squids, and I'm not talking fucking kraken size. I'm not talking fucking, you know, giant monster size. Fucking leviathan motherfuckers. I'm talking just normal sized squids. Normal sized octopuses. Could you imagine how terrifying it would be if you could see in the air and a fucking octopus like if octopus and squids could fly through the air the way they swim through water like say if right now if every octopus and squid in the ocean all of a sudden developed the ability to suddenly float through the air like it was water That would be fucking terrifying. Like, we would all have to have machine guns and shotguns at all times to not be consumed by the flying octopuses. Otherwise, literally just going outside to play frisbee would be life and death. Like, can you think of something more horrifying in that situation? That would completely be destructive to the whole world. That's all it would take. Like octopuses and squids being able to fly in the air like they're fucking birds. That they can move through the air like it were water. Do you understand how fucking terrifying that would be? You'd walk outside and see a fucking octopus on the side of your fucking house. Or hell, what if you, like, all fish could do it? Imagine if all fish could suddenly go in the air and swim through the air as if it were water and breathe it just fine. The world would be fucking terrifying. But yeah, just imagine if all the octopuses and squids. Or not all of them, just imagine if there were some squids and octopuses that could just float in the air. Like I said, bloopers from Mario. Star vampires from fucking... Though technically those can like come invisible, which would be a little worse. But, yeah, star vampires from Cthulhu lore. Could you imagine that? But like I said, it's just... I gotta blow my fucking nose. <laughs> ah. I think I'm having allergies to some shit. I don't know. What the fuck am I allergic to? It's winter. There is no pollen anywhere! No, it's been like the warmest winter ever. Which probably won't last for very long. I mean, we're bound to have some snow here soon. I'm just saying this. I am in no ways judging God. At the same time, I, I, I don't agree with how things happen. I don't agree with how people who do believe in God conduct themselves. And I don't believe 
it's right the way certain things do take place in the Bible, nor do certain things make sense. And I'm like, there are so many things that I'm like, should I read the Bible? Like, at one point, I rolled a d20, and I was like, okay. No, I went and rolled, I flipped the coin. I was like, okay, heads, I, I make a playlist about the Bible. Tails, I don't. I got tails. So it's like, okay. But it's just like, I believe in God. But at the same time, like, take the Noah experiment, Greek Boston. I mean, if you look at it logically, from that perspective, like you li like go listen to the creepy pasta Noah experiment, and it's just unless God were like really becoming very involved to help Noah out in that situation, it literally would have been like that. That's mathematically how it would have gone down. So the only way it wouldn't have gone that way is if God had a lot more involvement in things than not. And you might say another thing with the Noah flood is this. Well, I mean. Why couldn't other people just build a boat? It wouldn't have been big enough to hold every animal in the world, just big enough to, you know, keep them alive. But here's the thing. When Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, you had an angel of flaming sword protected. At that point, is it really that hard to believe we just wouldn't have angels going around flaming swords, cutting every ship apart that wasn't Noah? Or that, you know... At that point, the whole ocean's the whole world's covered in ocean, or at least the part with people. You know, is that hard to imagine that there'd be octopuses and stuff going around just tearing boats apart? Because I mean, other people would have known how to build a fucking boat. Okay. But at the same time, there's other things to keep in mind. Is that? There are different animals and species. I mean, how many species go extinct every year? I mean, we have drawings back in Greek times of animals that lived back then that don't live now. And it's not that they're... I mean, I'm not saying the fucking chimeras and hydras fucking existed. But, I am saying that there were different species of bears and goats and types of deers that don't exist nowadays. And of course, stick lions. There were lions in whole parts of the world that they don't live there now because, you know, there's less environment for them to live in, there's less of them. Plus, a lot of times we hunted them to extinction, which honestly makes sense because if there were lions in my city, we'd probably all try to kill them because you'd have too many fucking school kids getting mauled by fucking lions trying to get into their fucking school bus. You know, there'd be too many people losing family members over it. So it would just be too dangerous. I mean, t take Jurassic Park. You know, it'd be a terrible idea to bring dinosaurs back. You know, it would a lot of people would die. And here's another thing. A lot of fantasy settings, especially the ones that are the most entertaining and exciting, are the most dangerous fucking places in the universe. I mean, hell, take any Final Fantasy. You're leveling up because you go out in fucking fields and stuff, and you're... All of a sudden, attacked by a fucking behemoth or a Marlboro. I mean, could you imagine if there were like giant Venus flytrap plants with fucking shark teeth that spew acid and poison that have super strength, and that you have to have magic powers and gun blade to fight? I mean, yes, works of fiction are much more entertaining, but they're fucking dangerous. Even for the people with the superpowers. Like in that situation, for you to be having fun, you have to be the superpowered person in a world that's dangerous with billions of people that are helpless in a world that like, literally is terrifying. And just, I mean, heck, a lot of people take how comfortable our lives are nowadays. I mean, with modern technology, have heat and air conditioning and and or plumbing, I and mean, hell, a lot of places in the world it used to be that life ends when you were fucking eaten alive, screaming in pain and agony. I'm like, that's horrible. I'm very grateful that's not the case for most people nowadays. At the same time, it's just... I don't know, I just want people to be nicer to each other. Is that so bad? Like, I enjoy violent video games. There's nothing... Drink 
this one out here. And I enjoy it. Like, Socrates would agree with video games. Because, back then, Socrates talked about how, like, attacking the straw domain and stuff like that was good for releasing aggressive feelings. And it's nothing wrong with having those feelings. You just have to be able to way of, you know, using them productively in a way that don't hurt people. And same way with the story of the Odyssey, like Odysseus and his son, telling his son that it's good to be angry, but you have to know that there's a time and place for it. So you have. And part of being a man, part of being an adult, is knowing. When do you show that anger? When do you use it? You know, there's a time where no matter how angry you are, you should stay calm. You shouldn't do anything about it. But there are times where you know, violence is necessary. But usually it's in a regard of self-defense. But again, you have to understand the circumstances you're in. And, because I said it. Sometimes people will try to manipulate how you feel to try to make you act out in a certain way that will get you hurt. And other times, you know, anger can be important as a motivation to actually take action. Whereas otherwise you might not do anything. Same way with pain. You know, when you feel the stove burn when you accidentally cook yourself trying to cook some eggs, you know, you pull your arm back right away because you're like, ow, that hurt. Whereas if you didn't feel pain, you just leave your hand there until you start smelling something. You're like, oh shit. And by then, you know, you've suffered serious injury. I mean, the purpose of pain is to get us to not hurt ourselves. At the same time, feeling a little bit of pain helps us, but feeling too much pain hurts us. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, or sometimes it can either make our physical lives unbearable, or it can make us, you know, the pain is just too much for our hearts to handle, and become either bitter, or violent, or aggressive, or hateful. And it's just... It'd just be nice if everyone was nice with each other. We have more compassion for each other. I, the way I look at it, I enjoy all the stories. I enjoy the movies, and the comics, and mangas, and animes, and movies, and rock music. It's... Like, there's sometimes I'll listen, you know, I'll just like lay down and I'll listen to music onto my headphones. And just listening to the music, sometimes very violent music, can make me feel calmer. And it can make me feel more normal. And like I said, that's probably the biggest thing about a lot of these videos. Just For me, these videos are just me trying to express myself. Just trying to share the thoughts and feelings in my mind. Dropping a filter, just talking, you know, just, just be me. Just, and maybe other people out there feel the same way I do. Or maybe you guys will feel less alone. Maybe everyone out there feels this way to some degree. I don't know, but it just seems like everyone wants to take a side on something. Everyone wants to be aggressive. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a competitive, aggressive side to you, but you have to use it in a way that's constructive. And you have to be able to control it. I mean, it's just there's so many people out there that literally be consumed by it to where they're just think, they think about nothing but hate. I mean, you have white people that hate black people, you have black people that hate white people. Guys that hate girls, girls that hate guys. You know, Christians hate Jews, Jews hate Christians. Left versus right, right versus left. I mean, it, it just seems like so many people fucking hate each other. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I mean, like I said, I enjoy violent movies. I've watched the Hellraiser shit. I've watched Saw movies. But I would never want anyone in real life to ever experience any of those things. And if anyone ever has, that's, that's absolutely horrible. I mean, you look back 
and medieval times, I mean, how many different ways they had of torturing people and doing horrible things to each other. I mean, it's just awful that we treated each other in such a way. And there's still people treating each other bad nowadays. They just... Remember those... It's just... I don't like people hurting each other. I mean, it's one thing that's in self-defense. It's one thing if you're trying to protect somebody else. But aside from that, I mean, it's just... And I understand there are extenuating circumstances in certain situations. And I understand there are sometimes where people are forced into a corner. I mean, every situation is unique. And that, I mean, that's the whole point of a trial system, is that, you know, you weigh the evidence, and one, decide if somebody actually is guilty or not, and two, then part of a jury trial is you're like, okay, if you were in that situation, would you have done the same? Do you think that even if that person is guilty, due to the letter of the law, should they be punished? Like I said, law is important for the order of society, but... I mean, heck, listen to any of Patrick Stewart's speeches in Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, it may be a nerdy show, but it's got a lot of philosophical points that I think a lot of people just find important. But it's just... I don't know. Patrick Stewart, I... I, I think we all enjoyed a good job with the card speech. But it's just... I don't know. I just don't like people being mean to each other. I don't like people hurting each other. I don't like people being in pain. And things like war, murder, rape, or people hurting children. I don't think that stuff should ever even exist. Like, I don't think there's any reason why it should ever even happen. Like, I mean... Everything about it's fucked up. I'm gonna go walk over here and fart. It's not as far as I don't want to fart next to you. But I, I don't think I'll be able to hold it. Okay, I'm back. Just, I, I, I definitely couldn't hold that. Um, but, it's just, I don't like people hurting each other. I don't like people being mean to each other. How? My personality, in general, the way I am, people. I just don't like being mean to anyone. A lot of people feel that I'm a bit of a pussy, that I'm non confrontational. Man, I've been in probably a couple hundred fights over the past, but most of them consist of me losing. It usually was like a group of five some odd people beating the fucking shit out of me. Like I said, being, having your head stomped on or thrown into a brick wall or being punched hundreds of times sucks. <sighs> but it's just... In general, I don't like fighting. The times I did, it was just an issue like... You know, there was no longer a choice. Either, you know, I have to protect myself or, you know, there's other people in danger and I have to protect them. Granted, I'm not strong, I don't have powers or anything, I'm not even a capable fighter. But I mean, if you see somebody else being hurt, you know, there's nothing really wrong with wanting to try to help them. You know, you should probably be a better fighter and more capable than I am, but that's a very low bar to set. I mean, it's, I guess one good way to put it is Batman. You know, the one when Batman begins, it's like the more bad Dark Knight, like, I'm not wearing hockey pants! Like I said, it's not a good idea for somebody to be a fucking vigilante. And, hell, don't take advice from me anyway, just because I'm just some dude on the fucking internet. Like, I don't, you know, guys don't know me. I'm just some crazy motherfucker who's just sad and just, it's just an emotionally broken person that just cries a lot when he's by himself. He just talks to himself all the time probably out of isolation. Just 
in general doesn't trust other people just because a lot of people have been very mean to me or betrayed me and I've just gotten used to that idea that you know being treated in a bad way or being betrayed or abandoned is just You know, to see ulterior motives in other people. You see how you know, you got shadows in people's eyes. Now I can see there's a big bar. And I understand a lot of these fucking videos I'm making are cringy as fuck. But I'm cringy as fuck. I'm just trying to be honest with how I feel. Just trying to like, just be open. Just trying to talk about what's in my mind without concern about what people are gonna think. Yes, you guys are gonna think I'm weird. You guys are gonna think I'm stupid and I'm just some little bitch that can't deal with things emotionally. And maybe I am. I mean, things bother me. And I imagine like most people it probably wouldn't bother them. I'm just I'm just being a baby. But at the same time, it's just stuff does bother me. It does upset me. It's just going on two fucking hours we haven't got some fucking lots of hours. For fuck's sakes. But it's just... Mazgus just... That was one extreme, like, as far as people that were hurting each other. Because it's what they're supposed to do. It's what the word tells them to do. It's just, I don't, I don't agree with that. And like I said, the only thing that's accomplished by a hell existing in the way that people say it does is to torture people, to cause pain, suffering. You could take any person, even a good person, who's kind and would never hurt anyone, put them in that situation, they'll come out as a demon. You expose to somebody that much pain and suffering, they won't be them anymore. They'll destroy who they were. I mean, at that point, whether it be the perspective of humans, angels, or anything, you have an area like that where people are being tortured for eternity, it's the same reason why you would have a public execution. You're trying to scare everybody else. You're trying to show them, hey, this is what will happen to you if you defy me. You know, you do as I say, and you obey me, or I'll do this horrible thing to you. That's what it amounts to. It's just a fucking threat. Now, I'm not saying the threat isn't real, but I'm saying. In what way is that not horrific? In what way is that not controlling and manipulative? In what way is that not psychotic? I mean, you're threatening people. I mean, heck, even take that to a human degree. If you went up to people threatening, hey, do as I say, or I'll throw you in this cage and light you on fire. Even though, you, from a human perspective, you at least know you're going to die and it will stop burning at some point. But even then, to threaten somebody with that? It's just, what's the point? You're trying to scare people into obedience. That's all that is. It's, it's extortion. Well, an extortion is more about resources. What's the word for it? You're just coercion? I feel coercion is not a strong enough word. But it's just threatening an individual with torture or the execution or a degrading imprisonment or of pain or humiliation or ostracization or you know eternal hell. It just seems psychotic. And it seems like there's no benefit to it. I mean, I can understand if there was a being that's too violent and dangerous that's going to hurt other people, then simply isolate that being from others. 
that it would be harmful to them. And if there's no way to stop that being harming others, then just delete them from existence. Why keep them around just to torch them? The only reason I can think of it's it's to be an example. At which point, the whole point of an example is to say, hey, this is what will happen to you. You don't do as I say. And it's just... It just seems psychotic to me. And I said, I'm not trying to judge God or anything. But it's just... One, of course, no matter what your faith is, even if you don't believe in God, the idea of such a thing is very unpleasant. But then again, there's also the thought is this. What does it say about any being in existence that advocates for such a thing? That desires such a thing? I mean... And it, again, I can't really judge. Because here's the thing. On the one hand, I'd want to be like, overly protective of humanity, protect everyone from being hurt. But the moment I see people like harming children or a bunch of people raping me or a place full of just murder, I'm likely to just burn the entire city to the ground out of disgust and sadness. And it's just... And I've come across a few video games where I stopped playing it, like Will of Wonderful World, where eventually it came to a scene where, you know, there was violence against a child. I'm like, um, I'm not okay with this. This is this is crossing a line. I'm not okay with this. I'm deleting this game. I'm not okay with that. It's fucked up. That's wrong. And it's just what the fuck. And take the slavery thing in the past. I mean, there were white people back then who were very strongly against slavery. I think it was like James Brown or something like that. There was a man who actually organized a small military. And he actually went around forcibly freeing slaves and saving them by murdering them. You know. I think they had some form of guns back then that was like pretty shitty, like you know, the older version. But in the end, he was caught and him and all of his cohorts were publicly executed. Because he was basically Batman. But, you know, freeing the slaves. Yeah, you know, he was being very violent about it, but at the same time, I can't judge him because, you know, the only reason I probably wouldn't have done that is just cowardice on my part. I mean, because in the end, what happens to him? He's publicly executed. You no? Know? Depressed or not, I don't want to die. But I mean, at that point, it wasn't even really an issue. Like, usually the people that owned slaves back then would justify it by like saying, oh, these people are a different race, so they're not people, blah, 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 blah. At the same time, a lot of people just did it because they didn't even care. Like, they would own white and black slaves. And there's slaves everywhere. It's just a lot of times, there's just people that don't care about others and they just want to hurt other people. I mean, heck, take bullying. A lot of times, people will bully people about certain things, but now, if you make it wrong to bully about certain things, people will join that side and bully from that side. So it's not an issue of uh, they even care about their viewpoint. It's that they just want to hurt people. And they'll t take whatever side they can just as an excuse to hurt others. Or to be rich. Or to have power. Which, I mean, I can kind of understand. Because, you know, it would be nice to be rich. It would be nice to have power. It would be nice to be, like, very healthy. Or be attractive. Or have beautiful women actually, you know, want to spend time with me and be affectionate. Or, you know, just somebody you can trust. Because, honestly, I would say this. One person is a lot more important than just a bunch of people. But, you know... I can understand why that would be interesting to people, especially the idea of having good food, a comfortable living situation, not having to work at a fucking factory, sometimes like 80 fucking hours a week. At the same time, it's just... 
I don't know. I don't understand a lot of things. I know a lot of times it's just... And just sometimes the way the world is, it's just... Why? Why is the world like that? Why are we like that? I don't know. I'm grateful that I live in the modern era with, like, where I can have, you know, good food. It's not like I got to worry about starving them. There's an abundance of food out there. And at least there are rules in society that, you know, I'm at least protected from other people hurting each other, but... I mean... I've heard people talk about how much they hate gay people. Saying that, you know, they think all gays are, like, being gay is worse than murder. And that they should, like, all gays and training, all that should be denied health care and jobs. I mean, I'm listening to these people and I'm like... They're like one step away from like publicly lynching murdering people. Like, and I know that was a thing that happened like not even a hundred years ago, where people were publicly murdered just for being gay. And it's just you listen to people nowadays and you realize that if it were legally okay, they would be going out and just murdering people for having a different sexual orientation. It's like, oh, you're a guy who likes another guy. And all of a sudden, you're like burning people fucking alive. I mean, it's just what the fuck. I mean, how how can you look at that as anything other than just you're murdering innocent people? And it's just. And I'll say this. I mean, it's just. And some people have concerns about how it affects kids, but I mean, really, when it comes right down to it, nothing really sexual should be involved with kids at all to begin with, you know? So, I mean, children should be sheltered from that sort of stuff. You know, anything, you know, sexual. Just because that stuff is, no. And, I don't know, of course, some people say, like, oh, it's against God and stuff. And I'm like, well, honestly... That's a bit of a differing opinion a lot of people are going to have. But when it comes right down to it, I mean, this. It says in the Bible not to eat pork. I eat lots of bacon. More than is probably healthy. But my cholesterol is fine. But I like bacon. I'm, I don't see it as wrong that I eat bacon. The biggest reason why I would say it was important in the past for people to eat ba not eat bacon or shellfish was because it wasn't cleaned or raised properly. How many times were people eating shellfish and getting fucking food poisoned? How many times were people eating bacon and pigs and getting worms and parasites? So what it really came right down to is this. The reason not to eat bacon from that perspective is that it was, you know, you're going to get parasites and worms. People were dying. Plus, you gotta imagine, if you're getting, like, pork worms and some kind of stuff affecting your brain, I mean, it would probably cause people to act in a psychotic fashion. Same way, the thing about, you know, being gay. Back then, you're tribal people. You need to populate as much as possible. So, you need every man and woman, like, everybody from both sides, if we're just basically human beings or just fucking cattle at that point. And we're just like needing them because you need to have as many people as possible to fight with the other tribes so that you can actually not be conquered and become, you know, enslaved yourselves. Because a lot of times tribes will fight each other and, you know, if you aren't strong enough, didn't have enough people, well then, now you're slaves. Now you're murdered. Now, you know, your city's burned to the ground. So it was an issue of just survival. It's just trying to make as many people as possible so you can cannon fodder for war. It's the best way to look at it there. I mean, and take tithing stuff. It's, like I said, if you believe in tithing, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, what was the government back then? It was a theocracy. You know? The God, the, God, the church, it was the government. You gave to the king, you gave to God. You gave to God, you gave to the king. You gave to the king, you gave to the church. You gave to the church, you gave to the king. You know, it was a theocracy. The government 
was the church. The church was the government. At that point, what is tithing? It's an income tax. It's an income tax. And I'll say this. No matter how you look at it, no matter what your belief is in Christianity or Judaism or any belief, you can always agree with the line that Jesus said. Render unto Caesar what's Caesar's. Render unto God what's God. Give to God what is God's. Give to the king what is the king's. You know, give to someone what is rightfully theirs. Now, everyone's going to disagree about what is rightfully theirs, but, you know, the same way, like, a lot of people take certain viewpoints because they feel that it's what helps people, what's good for people. And then part of me wants to try to believe that, you know, that everyone at the core is a good person. And that if they're not a good person, then, you know, something must have happened. At the same time, I know that's not expressly true, because, you know, history and personal experience have taught me that that hopeful thought is wrong, and that perhaps at times I am looking at the world with rose-colored glasses, trying to just wish for an idyllic world where everyone is kind to each other, to where no one lies to each other, no one hurts each other. And I'll say this, like the whole thing with Sodom and Gomorrah, they kind of make sense a lot when you're kind of scared. I mean, you have entire cities being lit on fire. At the same time, here's the thing. The angels came to get Lot out of the city and get him out of the city because God was going to burn the entire cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground, right? But here's the thing. In the Bible, let's usually talk about why Sodom and Gomorrah was burned. Because of the violence. Because Sodom and Gomorrah were known or mainly violence, rape, and that they were just terrible to foreigners, and that they were just really bad to everyone. It was just that there was a lot of crime, a lot of stealing, a lot of fraud. I know one thing the Bible goes on and on about is like we shouldn't, you know, give loans at high interest to people. That, you know, sometimes the corruption of like people lending money or gambling or just, you know, charging people high interest. But mainly it was the violence, rape, and just attacking foreigners. And yet people usually use Sodom and Gomorrah as examples of that God hates gay people. And I'm like, why? Why do you guys think that? And usually the response will be because, well, the angels came there, the angels were guys, and they came to Lot, and all the people in the city were clamoring around saying, you know, give us, give us those men that just came, we want to, we want to fuck them. And Lot's like, well, I have daughters, you want to go fuck them instead? And they're like, no, no, let us fuck the guys that came to see you. And they were trying to violently beat on the door and then come in and try to rape the dudes. I'm like, and people were like, see? See? That's... See, the cities were burned because they were all gay. Because they were trying to sleep with the guys. I'm like, that's that's not how that works. Because I'll tell you this. I have never once done anything wrong to anyone. I have never... You know, assaulted anyone. I have never tried to force myself. Anymore. I've never tried to do anything inappropriate. So, granted, I have tried to flirt with thousands of women and ask them out. But I'm just sort of used to rejection. But it's like, okay, next. And of course, like every relationship I've had has ended for you know me being dumped, and cheated on. Sometimes being dumped, I would find out being cheated on afterward or before. Sometimes I would be like, yeah, I don't want to deal with you anymore because you're fucking this other person. I don't care with that. Bye. But usually, like, like every relationship I've been in ends with me either being told that my partner no longer finds me attractive and I don't arouse them anymore, or they want to fuck other people, or they tell me I'm just too nice to them. 
So in general, I'm my relationship's dead because I'm told I'm too nice, or I'm just too ugly to have sex with anymore. So it's like, yay! I'm ugly, and I'm boring, and I'm just too nice. And that's the thing, like, I'm just, I don't like arguing and yelling and fighting. Because here's the thing, I know, like, I had one woman tell me, like, she wanted to break up with me because, you know, I never argue or yell with her. But, I mean, we never really had anything to fight about. And in general, I don't really like yelling and fighting and stuff. And here's the thing, if I was in a relationship with somebody and they were doing stuff where I felt it would be necessary to have to yell or argue, then I would just fucking leave. Because I'm not wanting to be in a relationship to argue or yell with somebody. If I'm going to be in a relationship with somebody, I want to be with somebody that I feel peaceful around, that I feel that I can trust, that I feel safe with. The moment I feel that being around this person is going to feel like a fucking war zone, the moment I feel scared of my partner, is the moment I don't want to be around them anymore. I don't want to be with them. You know, so if I'm in a situation where I'm really feeling I need to argue or yell with somebody, then I just don't want to be in a relationship with them because that's not what I want. I don't want that. So if I'm in a situation where I'm with a woman and she's like yelling or and there's a situation where I feel like it might be necessary for me to have to start yelling or arguing, I mean, if there's a situation that I feel is necessary for me to have to yell or argue, then I'd be like, okay, the relationship's over. I should just end this because it's... It's not what I want. You know, I mean, I don't know about other people because everyone's different. But me as a person, you know, as a man, what do I want from a woman? I want somebody I can trust. I want someone I feel safe around. I want someone I can feel peaceful around. I want someone I find, you know, sexually cute and sexy. And of course, some sex. And well, just I want someone who actually will be my friend. Someone I enjoy spending time with. Someone who accepts me and respects me for who and what I am. And somebody who would never, ever hurt me. And I just... I don't like arguing and yelling. I mean, I'll do it in situations I have to with other people. If something important is going on. But it's not something I enjoy. I'll get angry and pissed off at a video game. But... Like, if I'm in a relationship with somebody, I don't want to yell at them. I don't want to cuss at them. I don't want to treat them badly in any way. And if they're doing something to where, like, okay, well, like, oh, here's your girlfriend. Oh, she's sucking this one dude's dick. Well, I feel the need to have to want to yell at you now because I feel angry and emotionally hurt over being betrayed in such a way. However, at that point, what's really the point? Relationship's over. There's nothing to salvage. You've already betrayed me. You know, there's nothing to fix here. It's over. Bye. Enjoy the dude who you're sucking off in the span. Bye. I don't want to talk to you ever fucking again. Goodbye. You know, because at that point, you know, if there's something bad and important going on that, you know, is really going to upset you, then obviously, you know, if you're that upset that there's something you're going to need to yell about, then there's something else really wrong going on. So, relationship's already over. So just, fuck, bye. I don't, like, I'm not gonna, why, why would I even want to try to argue with him? One, I don't like yelling and arguing. And two, at this point, what am I going to try to fight for or some shit? There's nothing to save. I just, thankful that, okay, thank you for showing me how you really are. Bye, go away. Don't ever fucking bother me again. I, I got off top. Main point is this. Being gay isn't gonna make you try to rape angels. Okay? Like, I've seen so many women who are so very sexy and beautiful, and yet, I want to definitely, one, not make them uncomfortable, but two, you know, I want to respect other people's boundaries. I want to respect other people's feelings. I won't go up to them and try to flirt with them and try to ask them, hey, if they want to try to grab a bite to eat or something. But, again, you know, no matter how attracted you are to somebody, you're not going to attack them. 
That's one thing I don't understand. Granted, of course, there are people out there that do do that shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's like, what? Why? That's disgusting. Why would you do that? That is gross, and that is fucking disgusting. It's just... It's hard pressed to think of really anything more disgusting than that than actually trying to force yourself on another person. That's... that's disgusting. That... it's just... and that's unacceptable. It's just... It's, what the fuck? But it's just... Being gay isn't gonna make you rape other dudes, okay? That's, that's not how that works. It just means that you're gonna have a sexual attraction to guys. Same way, if a woman has a sexual attraction to women, it doesn't mean she's gonna just start raping women. If a man's sexually attracted to a woman, we're not just gonna suddenly start attacking women. If a man attacks a woman, it has nothing to do with his orientation. It has not just deal with what kind of person that person is. At that point, if that person's gonna attack a woman, if they were gay, then they would attack a guy. But it has nothing to do with orientation. Orientation doesn't make you violent. You know? Like, here's the thing. If ever, if there were so many people in that city that were just straight up gay, you know what they would have done? At most, if the angels were like really, really handsome to them, they would have come knocking Lot's door like, Hi, we saw really, really handsome people come here, and we actually want to have sex with them? Which even then, that sounds kind of weird. But at that point, you know, maybe a better way to put it would be like, hey, we saw some very um, impressively sexy people come here. May we talk to them? At which point Lot would say, oh, they're not interested. At which point the people of Sodom and Gomorrah would be like, okay, we understand. We respect that person's point of view, and we're okay with that they don't want to come talk to us. So now we're all just going to peacefully leave. But that's not what happened. They tried to break the fucking door down and fucking break and murder everybody. Okay? So I'm just saying this. It had nothing to do with being gay. It was the fact that they wanted to rape people. It was the raping. That was the problem. So that's the biggest thing I can say there. Is that I don't see there anything wrong with people being gay. However, raping is horrible. That's absolutely unacceptable. Honestly, if I was in the same situation as God, I probably would have burned the cities around too. Because, I mean, that's basically what amounts to is God basically doing to those cities. But, I mean, he has the power to do it. And I can't really tell. I mean, it's, it's, it's his call. But here's the thing. It's just... it's It had nothing to do with being gay. It just... It was just the fact they wanted to rape people. Being gay doesn't cause that. That's, that's not how that works. That's not how that works. I mean... If I see somebody with a delicious slice of pizza, I'm not going to go up to them and just deck them in the face and take their pizza. You know, me liking pizza isn't going to mean I'm violent enough to assault them for the pizza. Now... If I can get the pizza on my own, awesome, delicious. But I'm not going to violently assault somebody to take their pizza. That's not... Liking pizza is not going to make you violent. It's... 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 Well, like I said, that's the whole thing I did with Sodom it, it was about the rape and the violence. And then, of course, there's different things Adam and Eve, and like, okay, God made Adam. And of course, I've talked to some people that feel, like I said, I've talked to some religious people that think that the dinosaurs were around at the same time as Adam and Eve. Like, Adam was fucking riding a fucking dinosaur. Like, what? Adam was on the back of a fucking T Rex? Like, what, what, how the fuck was that? Yes, he went around naming the animals. Doesn't mean every animal in existence was there. And yes, there's lots of things about it that don't make fucking sense. I mean... 
One, God makes Adam. But then here's the thing. How often did God stop by to talk to Adam? Did he really teach him anything? Did he was really there with him? Also, the animals probably couldn't actually speak, so... I mean, you have a, a person who's suddenly sentient, who had no parents, no siblings, no friends, nothing to learn from, no education, and is just in a garden where he's told, hey, eat all a bunch of fruits and vegetables. But... And there's a bunch of animals, go name them. I mean, he wouldn't even understand how he had a language or what it was. And some people would have thought it would probably be Enochian, you know, the language that actually technically angels would have spoken. So the idea is that humans and angels spoke the same language up until the time of the Tower of Babel. At which point, also, the whole Tower of Babel thing's got, like, so many fucking mixed ideas. And then, of course, there's several creepy postures about heaven that are just or just the perspective that God would have the human race or just how souls are and I'm not saying that stuff is true but it's something to consider because I, mean, I try to look at anything from a philosophical standpoint and I try to respect everyone's viewpoints and a lot of things are just as valid as okay go to heaven to have a paradise as opposed to go to heaven and it's actually just as bad as what you'd expect from the hell. And it's just... Because, I mean, you look at it other ways, this. I mean, from the perspective of God, you know, we can't really know God, and God is, from that understanding, basically billions of years old and all-powerful, all-knowing. At the same time, you have a being that knows everything, that can do everything, and that is aware of everything at all times, and is billions and trillions and trillions of years in existence, to where time itself doesn't even have a proper meaning, that then creates a human, and is also speaking to others, who speaks to the angels and says, let, let us create man in our image. Which at that point means God already created all the angels. How old were the angels at that point? When God created Adam, how old were the angels? How long had angels been in existence? How many were there? Here's another thing. Has God continued to create more angels? And then there's an idea of how do you define what what's the definition of an angel? You know, technically angel by the whole old meaning in the Bible technically means messenger, which point just means any being that's not a human that God has created as a way of talking to us. And even then, it's just like, what? And then there's times in the early Bible where it's mentioned where God is talking directly to Adam and Eve even after they eat the fruit. There's times where he talks to Abel and Cain directly. And here's the thing. How long was Adam alone for it most of the time in the garden, dude? And you give, like, someone a fucking fruit saying, okay, don't eat this one thing or I'll kill you. I mean, think of that like a first perspective of you just have a kid who has no education and you leave a gun near him and say, okay, don't touch this, it'll kill you. Did Adam even really understand the concept of life and death at that point? I mean, did he even understand? And even then, just... Don't eat, don't reach in the cookie jar is kind of an extreme rule to kick a kid out of the house. Who really, at this point, would Adam really have known better? And even then, like I said, he had no parents, he had no friends or siblings, he had a bunch of animals that, as far as I understand, couldn't actually talk to him. Did any of the angels ever come by and actually properly speak to him? Did Adam even really even know anything? And especially if the whole fruit is a you know, supposed to be a good and evil, then, I mean, if literally the whole point of it is understanding the difference between right and wrong, I mean, if he, does, if he can't even understand that, then how can he really be held accountable for eating the damn fruit? And even then, you might say, okay, sin is disobedience, but at this point, you know, saying obedience to all situations is kind of fucked up, because, I mean, how'd that work out for the Nazis in Nuremberg? They were just following orders. At some point, you have to be like, okay, but even then, you're like, okay, well, it's God. You have to do what God says. 
regardless of who it is, I mean, if I get a voice of God telling me to, like, kill anyone, I'm not going to follow it. I mean, let alone the Abraham Isaac thing, where he was, like, you know, told to kill his own son and shit. Let alone... But here's the thing, being told to kill anyone. It's like, what the fuck? This is what the fuck. Here's the like thing, Abraham and Isaac, that had to be awkward as fuck afterward when they went home. You imagine Isaac probably had some issues after that. Like, he might have some, like, even if it was like, like, no matter how much, like, it turned out okay in the end, it still doesn't change the fact that I, Isaac probably would have had severe PTSD about that situation. Forever. And even though, like, technically in the story, you know, Abraham loved Isaac more than anything in the whole world, and yet he was still willing to do that. It's like, that's gotta be some fucking mixed emotions on both their parts. I mean, how did Abraham feel about that in the years to come as he got older? How did Isaac feel about that growing up? What did Jacob and Esau think about that? You know, Isaac's sons. Like, did Isaac ever tell Jacob and Esau that story? They, I mean, he must have, right? Like, what did they think about that story? Like, what do you say to that? Like, oh yeah, your grandpa did this when I was young. It's like, what? What? It's like, how? What? What? How do you respond to that? Like, what kind of childhood is that? Like, how do you go about raising your own kids after that? Like, what the fuck? Seriously, holy shit. And then, of course, there's like... When Adam... Like I said, how many angels were made? How is God still making angels? When God makes an angel... What's the parameters of that? Like, how smart and how powerful is he making these beings? Like, how would they even compare to a human? And then, like I said, there's times where an angel will be like in a per a human state. Like, I mean, hell, Jacob actually wrestled one, broke his own hip doing it, until the angel agreed to bless him. And at the same time, not like you have humans, angels that, ah, my legs hurt, I need to sit up, I've been sitting in this fucking old chair so long. Ah! My ass hurts. I need a softer chair. It's a fucking metal folding chair. Why don't I buy a proper fucking chair? Hell, why don't I buy a fucking desk? My laptop is just sitting on my bed. I'm sitting in a folding chair in front of my... Or sometimes I'll put another folding chair on top of my bed. Put the laptop on the lap on folding chair. Anyway. I mean... Hell! Take when David wind up, you know, paying the dowry, you know, to earn the right to... Because, like... This was past killing Goliath and all that shit. You know, Saul's like, hey, if you want to marry my daughter, the princess, you have to go... And so, even Samson did a situation like this, too. Not for dowry, but just for, like, a, I don't know, show of power? I mean... He was like, okay, go fight the Philistines and bring me a bag of their severed dicks. Because, you know, it was mainly the Jews and the Philistines. The Jews were all circumcised. The Philistines weren't. So, go kill a hundred people and bring me a bag of their dicks. What David do? He's like, he went and doubled that. So he went around and killed 200 Philistine people, cut off their dicks, put them in a bag, and then went up to Saul, and he's like, hey, here's a bag of 200 severed penises. And then proceeded to bang Saul's daughter. What? Or there's the fact that, you know, David was a king, and yet he wind up fucking Uriah's wife. And then got caught for it. You know, she's pregnant, so he tries to convince Uriah to go home. Say, oh, you did great! Go back, go back to your wife. You know, hoping that they would have sex so that when she was pregnant, that when she gave birth, they would, you know, they'd both think it was Uriah's kid. Or at least Uriah would think he was a kid who would get caught. But Uriah was like, no, no, my friends are out here fighting still. I can't abandon them. Like, I need to be there for them. I, I feel too guilty if I 
went home and you know all my friends were you know still suffering like this I can't abandon them at which point David eventually said okay told his generals hey just send him to the front lines keep putting him in the front lines until he fucking dies at which point one of the smaller people over a small battalion who was given certain orders lost a battle really fucking badly and he's like oh god I don't want to tell David this because the king is going to be pissed he might even have me executed which again I feel that's kind of maybe an abuse of power to execute somebody for just failing what you tell them to do I mean just that's kind of why are we just killing people just left and right this doesn't seem very nice it doesn't seem very fair it doesn't seem like a very good work environment like, that doesn't seem like it's very conducive to positive, you know, social interaction. Anyway, main point is the general above him was like, hey, just tell him, like, hey, your, your servant Uriah died. So he, he started off telling King David that they lost this one battle really, really, really fucking badly. Which implies lots of people died. And, of course, David's upset. And it looks kind of bad for the messenger. But then the messenger's like, hey... Uh, I also want to tell you that your servant Uriah died. At which point David is ecstatic, he's super happy, and he is just cheerful as can be. It's also said that he was an amazing musician. Hell, it's even said that he had a heart after God. And I'm sure, like I said, from what I've read in the Bible, just you know, David was a very courageous and skilled fighter who was willing to take anybody on. And it's said that in the Bible, that with the exception of what happened in regard to Uriah and his wife, that God considered him blameless. That being said, I said there's more of that story, but in the end, you know, David and Uriah's wife do get married. And, you know, David, you know, apologizes. You know, he feels really bad for what he did. But in the end, it still doesn't change the fact that Uriah's dead. Uriah's dead. Like, how is, how is the situation going to be made up to Uriah? Like, is Uriah going to talk to David in heaven? Would Uriah still hold a grudge? I mean, technically his king fucked his wife and then had him murdered and then married his wife. Wouldn't Uriah hold a little bit of a grudge? Like, like how, how does that get better for him? Or take Job. Like at one point, before it starts, like, all oh, the kids that he had were murdered. Like, what about them? Or like, oh yeah, it turns out the field with all your livestock was destroyed and all the servants. And what about the servants? You know, your employees. You know, the people working for you. Like, didn't their lives matter? Like, you're telling me that all these hundreds of people are dead now. Did, didn't they matter? What about their lives? Like, they were just... They were just working for you. They were just your employees. And even then later, like, you know, Job's friends are dicks. Like, oh yeah, you must deserve this because you didn't do something right. Because you're not holy enough. Hell, I've heard people tell other people that, hey, you're dying of cancer? It's because you don't pray enough. Or, oh... You lost a limb. It's because you did this terrible thing in the eyes of God. Oh, your child has this one issue? Oh, it's because you're a sinner in the eyes of God. Like, guys, do you have any idea how fucking callous that sounds? Do you have any idea how abrasive, how just cruel that is? And it's just like... What the fuck? Then again, there were several parts in the book of Job where, like, the whole point before Satan even talks to God about, like, hey, consider my servant Job. Before we even get to that point, it's it says, on a day when the sons of God are, which would mean the angels, but it says the sons of God are gathered and have to present themselves for God. What does that even mean? One. Okay, so the sons of God are presenting themselves to God. How? Where? In what capacity? What does that mean? Like, there are several times that's mentioned in the Bible. Like, the sons of God present themselves to the Lord. And I'm like, 
Why? How? For what reason? Where? What is happening? Present yourselves to the Lord. What does that even mean? Like, what does that even mean for a bunch of angels to come and present themselves to God? Like, what does that... Are we talking like a military roll call? Are we talking like a family reunion? Like... What, what does that even mean? What, what, what is going on in that situation? Like, there is... And, of course, you have angels being represented sometimes as human form, sometimes in ways that are just fucking horrifying. Like, having, like, four different animal heads and a bunch of fire. Or literally just be a bunch of moving fucking wheels. And I'm like... What? What? And then, like I said, the whole idea of Jesus being crucified, like, I appreciate it. And I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I value the Holy Ghost and all that. But at the same time, why was that necessary? Like, why was Adam and Eve eating the fruit really considered that bad? Why, like, here's the thing. Like, like, they, like Adam and Eve, either of them would really properly understood better. Plus, I mean, you're leaving sentient beings alone with have a major defining characteristic of human beings being curiosity. And you're literally, like, it's not like he had a Nintendo or anything else to do. It was literally just, here's a bunch of animals and some carrots. Like, what, and here's the thing, what else was even there? What was going on? Did the angels speak to him? Like, when the, there was an angel flaming fucking sword in front of the guard when they left. Had Adam and Eve met any of the other angels before the point? Had they ever even seen anything like that? Had they ever, before they were forced out of the garden, had they ever seen what was outside the garden before? And here's another thing. Before God made Eve, how long had Adam been in existence in terms of years? And how much of that time did God actually spend with Adam? Did he talk to him? Did he teach him? And here's the thing. If you're going to create mankind in your own image, why? Why did God make us? And... If God is going to make us, why seem to like just, just like create us and then just sort of not be around us? Like we're a fucking fish aquarium. Like the whole planet is an aquarium made for our purpose. Because here's the thing, you, you, why do you buy an aquarium? The fish. Because the fish are what matter to you. But you have to build it. You have to have the aquarium ready first. You can't just put a bunch of fish from the pet store on a fucking counter. It's not how it fucking works. You got to get the glass tank. You got to put it in the water. The chemicals to treat it. The filter. The parts for the filter. And the you know the little rocks and the plants, the little houses, the temperature gauge, all that. You know the purpose of the aquarium is for the fish. The same way the purpose of the earth is for the human race. You know same time are we just something to be looked at from time to time like what what is our reason like and even then is that reason good is it something we even want I'd say one of the most important things of value to a human being that should never ever be taken away is free will I mean we're not fucking puppets and the main thing is this Yes, we should obey God. At the same time, we shouldn't be blindly obedient and have blind faith to anything and everything that says it's God or of God. And even then, we have minds to do a thing for ourselves. Yes, we're not nearly as smart. We haven't been lived for billions of fucking years. And we don't have all this power and we don't have we don't know everything, but at the same time. You know, we have minds of our own. We can think for ourselves. I mean, if we weren't supposed to, then what was the point of even creating us in this fashion to begin with? I mean, we might as well just been a bunch of puppets. I mean, the whole point of free will, I mean, heck, you don't want to be overbearing with your kids, because you want to give them room to be able to basically be their own, but also you don't want to, like, abandon them or 
neglect them or, you know, be too distant. I, I don't understand it. Like I said, I'm not judging God. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense to me. And there's a lot of things that just don't make sense. And here's the thing. It's just... Like, how long was Adam in existence? Did any angels fucking talk to him? How often did God come to see him? What did God talk to him about? When God made Eve, how much time went by between Eve's existence and actually eating the fruit? How how many years would that have been? Could it have been millenniums? I mean, technically, if they're immortal and not getting older, I mean, technically, they could have been there for a million fucking years. They don't really talk about that. Here's another thing. We know Adam lived for like 900 some odd years. How long did Eve live? And of course, when you had Adam, Abe, Cain, and Abel, I mean, here's the thing. Once Adam and Eve leave, you know, garden, I mean, how often did God speak to them? Did God teach Adam how to properly farm or do anything? I mean, how did he learn how to do anything? Another thing is this. I mean, you had the snake that was able to be there. I mean, think of that perspective of Adam and Eve. I mean, you're the only two beings aside from God that can actually talk. We don't know if they actually met any of the angels. Like, did any of the sons of God actually speak and talk to Adam and Eve at that time? Like, what, what was happening? Were there other humans? I said, well, of course there weren't, but at the same time, you know, after Cain kills Abel, he's like, oh no, the other people will kill me. And it's like, what other people? So far, the only human beings that have been mentioned, hell, at this point, the only sentient beings that men mentioned is there's God, the sons of God, Adam, Eve, a talking snake, and some people with giant fucking wings and superpowers and a fucking flaming sword. And now the two people that came out of Eve. What people are going to kill you, Cain? What, what, what is happening? Where are these other people coming from? And then there's something else. This Did God make other people? Did he make them in other circumstances? Like, where did these other people come from? There's also the issue of this. Multiple times, he mentioned Adam. Like, literally, one, were there any humans made before Adam and Eve? After Adam and Eve? The same time, in different circumstances, different places, different gardens? I don't fucking know. Where did these people come from? Then there's always the fact this. Adam and Eve are the only people who have a kid. And here's the thing, they don't talk about, they just mention Cain and Abel. One, how many daughters did they have? Like, were Cain and Abel their only kids at that point? Or did they have, like, several hundred daughters? Did they have other sons that they just didn't mention? Like, where are these people coming from? And at that point, who are Cain and Abel going to have kids with? Are they going to fuck their sisters? Their mom? Like, wh what is happening? Where are the other people coming from? Like, how is this family tree working? And here's the thing, there are multiple times God mentions to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Granny says it to the world itself when he makes it the world. And the animals be fruitful and multiply. But here's the thing. He tells Adam to be fruitful and multiply. Before Eve exists. And of course, after Eve, like every time he makes them, he says be fruitful and multiply. Here's the thing. He was telling Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply before they left the garden. Does that mean they were having sex and just didn't understand what they were doing and making people? And of course, later on, when they were kicked out, he tells Eve that it's going to be painful to deliver kids. I mean, does that mean she's been having kids this whole time, but not painful? Like, what what is going on? How does this work? And it's mentioned like, you know, Cain kills Abel, and here's another thing. They make it as sacrifice to God, and God comes and speaks to them. So they've already left the garden, they, they, and God is still coming and actually speaking to them. 
and at this point, like, what is their daily life? What are Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel eating? What are they doing for their lives? Like, what? What was Cain and Abel's childhood? And of course, when Cain killed Abel, did he really even understand what was happening? Like, of course, what Cain did was still wrong. At the same time, I mean, no one had killed anyone before, apparently. I mean, does that mean at some point, you know, Cain would have, like, bashed Abel's brains in with that rock and then be like, okay, Abel, I'm done being pissed. Get back up. You know, wake back up, Abel. A Abel, why aren't you waking up? Abel, wake up. Wait, why does this stuff keep coming out of your head? Just, can I just put it back in? Get, what if I just put this back in and, like, duct tape your head back together? Does that work? How do I fix this? I was pissed off and angry. I didn't think about what I was doing. I'm sorry, brother. Did Cain really even understand what was going to happen afterward? But then again, there's the fact that when, you know, God shows up and gets pissed about it, I mean, which understandably, you know, somebody's dead. At the same time, God's all-knowing. I mean, why did you let Abel die? Could you have just stopped it? Plus, I mean, the whole thing was regarded to jealousy over God, liking Abel's sacrifice to God more than what Cain's was. Um, What? So, what? Like, this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. It just, it does not make sense. It does not. Like, what the fuck? Seriously. And it's like, Kane's like, oh, but the people will kill me. I'm like, one... So obviously you do understand what killing means now. Two, what people? What people? Where are these people coming from? Then there's the fact that Cain goes to a city, takes a wife. I'm like, where did the fucking city come from? Why are there suddenly thousands and thousands of people that are not coming out of Eve's vagina? Where did they come from? And then, how was that conversation with Adam and Eve go out for? God shows up Adam and Eve like, yeah, guess what? Uh, both your sons are gone. Um, Cain killed eight. One of your sons killed the other one, and the one that did kill him, I exiled him and told him never to talk to you again. What? Where do you... What? And even then, as generations went by in that situation, I mean... Like, what were people eating? What were they doing on their day-to-day -day life? Like, what was considered good at that point? Like, I don't understand. And then you have the whole thing with Noah and the Ark. Or Job. Like, Job was considered, like, when he said to the Satan, like, oh, have you considered my servant Job? For he is perfect. Like, one, what is considered perfect? Like, what was Job's life? Like, when Job got up to eat, I just need to stand and walk around. I'll get tired of sitting down. Like, what did Job eat for breakfast? What did he do for a living? How was he with his wife and his children? I mean, what did people really read at that time? How were people interacting with each other? Like, what was considered the measuring stick for goodness. Like, like, oh, my servant Job is, is perfect and upright. What, what counts as perfect and upright? What was Job's life like? What was he doing that was considered so perfect in the eyes of God? Like, what was he doing? But then again, there's also mention that he was continually giving offerings to God, in cases, you know, kids might be doing something, but then you know, they died anyway. But also, 
If he's continually getting offerings, does that mean like most of his life is just slaughtering animals and lighting them on fire? Like how does what does that mean? How often is continually? It's like, oh, and Job was continually doing the offering. Like, how often is continually? How much is that? What does that even mean? And even then, at that point, if a human being is doing it that much, given what that goes for that ritual, for that offering, doesn't that have a psychological effect on a human? Wouldn't that really affect the way a person is? Or take Noah. You know, God spoke to Noah, you know, to build the ark and everything, because he was considered, you know, that there was two. Because here's the thing: man, when God said he's going to destroy the planet with flood, because there's violence and corruption everywhere. Because keep in mind, you know, apparently the sons of God, the angels, had taken human forms and been like interbreeding with people and doing stuff with magic and stuff. I don't know. But apparently the biggest problem was just that there was violence. And people were just... It basically was just violence and corruption. First off, violence is pretty straightforward. Two, I mean... At that point, do they even have a history to go off of? I mean, as far as I understand, people can't properly build boats. So... I mean... At least in the modern era, I can look back at like history, history books from American history, European history, and stuff from not only the Bible, but also, you know, Greek history, Roman history, the medieval age, the Renaissance period. I mean, we literally have stories of horrible wars fought with each other. I mean, hell, stuff about World War One, World War Two, and all that. You know, stuff that we should learn from the you know idea that we shouldn't fight wars anymore and yet it's still happening main point is this back then what the fuck did they have to learn from like did they even have a proper writing system other than the, you know the Sumerian language but even then like what were people really taught in history class back then like and even then, a lot of times it was an issue of, okay, there are resources, you need food, stuff like that, and you have to be strong to survive. I mean, at that point, you know, fighting and stuff, that becomes a survival instinct to where, you know, you have to be war-like to, you know, not die. You know, I mean, if anything, human beings, we can be described as one, very curious, that we have curiosity, but also we're very adaptable. A human being will adapt to any other situation they're in. Which, and then, it's still, you know, free will, a person still has choice, and if you make a bad decision, it's still your decision. But, the circumstances that you were put into may have forced your hand. I'm just saying, how would the people of ancient Sumeria and Mesopotamia have known better when nowadays it's like, what, six to eight thousand years in the future? And we have all this history and technology to learn from? And we're still killing each other. But that also brings another point. Noah was considered good. How? What was Noah doing? What was so special about Noah that he was considered that, okay, he would be spared? Like, what was Noah doing differently? And then, of course, there's the issue of Noah, his wife, his three sons, their wives are on the boat. But keep in mind, at this point, okay, repopulate the people. First off, you again have the situation where there are other people mentioned. Where did the other people come from? And then there's an issue of, okay, now Noah and his wife and his three kids and their wife. Um, there aren't very many people here. Like, it seems like there's a lot of, you know, incest, like, interbreeding stuff, like, like there's, there's problems here. It's just, what the fuck? And it's just, there's a lot of situations where there's a lot of genocides, or racist, racism situations, or people outright murdering or torturing each other, and I'm like... This isn't very nice for people to do to each other. What? 
And it's just like, what the hell? I mean, seriously, what the fuck? And take Samson, I mean, he definitely did the bag of dicks thing, but I mean, I mean, he was known as basically the strongest man out there. He basically had superpowers. He was considered the strongest man ever. Solomon was considered the smartest, wisest person ever, and was an extremely rich person and king, and had, and had like over a thousand wives, and yet, he had the situations he did. I mean, Sam's literally had killed over a thousand people with just a jawbone. He had like a group of like 3,000 plus people attack him, and with just like a jawbone, he ripped out of a fucking dead ass donkey. I hope it was dead, oh my god. I can't remember if it was, but. If it wasn't, oh my god, that's so mean. And it like kills over a thousand people with it. I mean, it literally fucking guts from the Zerk. But, you know, even more so. I'm just saying, fuck. And of course, he gets with this one girl, this is before Delilah. And like, on the way to like go to meet her for like a marriage thing or some shit, like, I think of a fiance or something. And he stops by, he strangles a fucking lion to death. And then, later on, he sees it again, and there's fucking bees build, building a honeycomb inside the dead lion's carcass. So then he reaches into the dead, rotting lion, into the swarm of bees, and starts eating the raw honey covered in fucking blood, guts, rotting flesh, and living bees. And then he takes it to his parents and feeds it to his parents but doesn't tell them where he gets it from. He even says straight in the Bible, yeah, he doesn't tell them where he got the honey from. Hopefully he cleaned it first. I don't know how you clean honey in that circumstance when it's, like, filled with blood and bees and... Like, what is it? Fucking Shimeo from fucking Deathmark where you're, like, killing people and taking a hand screw cork and drilling holes in people and then pouring honey in there so bees form fucking nests inside of humans that's now it's a mixture of honey and fucking blood? Like, what is this gross fucking shit? I mean, what... What the fuck is this? You guys ever play the visual novel Deathmark? It's kind of graphic. It's not for kids. Um, but anyway... Well, I still say Raging Loop is probably the best visual novel ever. <sighs> but yeah, what the fuck? Anyway, he makes a riddle of it. He tells his fiance, and then he he makes a wager of all the people about like about certain sets of clothes. Say, hey, you guys guess my riddle? I'll give you each a set of clothes. But if you don't, you each owe me a set of clothes. And all the people were really pissed because they couldn't figure it out. And so they went to his fiance and like, hey, we know that you know his answer to this riddle. So how about this? You tell us the answer to that fucking riddle, or we will burn you and your family to the ground. We will murder you, your parents, your siblings, and everyone you love and care about, and your home and everything. You and your whole family, we will burn you all alive and kill you. Obviously, that scares the shit out of her. So, she tells them, they tell him the answer, he is fucking pissed. He stands up like, you know what? You motherfucking cheaters. You would not have guessed my riddle if you hadn't coerced my fiancé for it. Fuck you all. They're like, well, you still owe us the debt. Like, oh, don't worry. I'll pay my fucking bet. I'll fucking pay it. And so he goes to the neighbor sitting. And he starts murdering people. He just starts killing people. Granted, they're considered the enemy. They're part of the Philistines. So there are people that aren't exactly at peace with his people. But he literally just goes to the next city where it's considered, you know, not an ally. And just starts murdering people on the street, stripping them naked, taking their clothes, and then coming back and saying, here, I'm paying your bet. And it's just the clothes that he, he literally murdered like 30 plus people. In cold blood, he just went to another city, murdered 30 plus people, stripped them naked, and literally just murdered them for their clothes. And then took the corpse, the clothes off their corpses, 
and then gave it to the people that won the bet. And then Samson left in anger. And then, after a little while of doing who knows what he was doing for how long, I assume a few months, where he went, I don't know. I think he said he mainly just chilled with his parents for a while and did other stuff. I don't know what the fucking other stuff is. You know, there's lots of things in the Bible it doesn't really explain or explains in a very vague way or in a way that doesn't make sense and I don't understand. Anyway, he comes back to see his fiance again. Like, okay, he's calmed down. He's like, okay, I've come to marry my fiance. I've calmed down. He's like, yeah, I already let her marry somebody else. And he's like, what? She's my fucking fiance. And he was like, but you left. I thought you didn't want to see her ever again. We haven't heard from you in months. And so he was pissed. So he then went to the fields, the people that he paid all the stuff in the city, and he took a bunch of foxes, and he tied them together, and then he tied fucking lit torches to their tails, and let them loose through their fucking fields. Which kind of feels like it's cruelty to animals, too. Anyway, so a lot of people in the city are kind of pissed that, you know, most of the crops have been burned, and probably a bunch of houses, too. So then, they make good on that one thing they threatened that one girl with. So then, not only, like, it was a maybe a bad decision at that point for anybody to cross Samson. I'm just saying this. Take the guy who was the father of Samson's wife. Of Samson's fiance. At that point, maybe you should have just, like, not married your daughter off immediately to some random dude. After witnessing this guy just literally murdered 30 plus people to steal their clothes off the corpse. Like, at this point... Maybe you should have just moved to a different country. Because this dude doesn't seem like he's somebody you want to go against. Because he's likely to kill you. It's just... He had super strength to the point that at one point he was trying to leave a city. And the people were pissed at him. And so what do they do? They try to lock him in the city. And... This may be motivation for Princess Mononoke, where, you know, Ashitaka, Prince Ashitaka, raises the... He's carrying Princess Mon, you know, the wolf girl, one arm, and with his other arm, he literally forces up the fucking gate. Which, I don't know if that was meant to be a reference to it, but here's like, Samson, like, they try to fucking lock him in a city. Which, I don't know why you would want to lock him in a city. They thought that they'd be able to, like, you know, capture him. He literally rips the fucking door. And this isn't just like a door door. It's a, like, this is something heavy enough to crush a fucking car. That, that the fucking gateway in Princess Mononoke was probably smaller than the stuff that Samson did. And Samson didn't just lift it up with an arm. He fucking tore it out of the fucking ground and carried it with him. Fuck this. This is on par with shit we see the fucking Incredible Hulk do in a fucking Avengers movie. Okay? At that point, it's like, okay, maybe we shouldn't try to actually try to fight the Incredible Hulk. You know, we, we may... It's like, we're, we can't really do shit about that. Let's just not. And of course, when the people, when they have their fields fucking burned down, Rather than just accept the fact that the Incredible Hulk burned the fucking field to the ground. They then murder the fiancé of the Incredible Hulk and her family and everything. And he's kind of upset about it. And then they're like, well, we're just going to fight him and kill him. 3,000 plus people. He literally just tears the jawbone out of a donkey and kills over 1,000. That's 1,000 that were dead. The other 2,000 plus that were just fighting... I doubt they got out of that without major injuries. They just either ran the fuck away when they noticed people being fucking bisected with a fucking bone out of an animal. It's not like it's a fucking blade. It's not like we're like, it's a super sharp sword of a shitty guy a bleach anime. It's literally like... At this point, it'd be like witnessing the Incredible Hulk 
murder people with a wiffle bat. And all of a sudden you see Bruce Banner lifting somebody up and taking a wiffle bat to them and using it like a fucking cheese grater. At that point you're like, fuck this shit. I'm out. Bye. I'm leaving. Like, no. 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 Did he just shove that Nerf bat down somebody's throat and through their tailbone? Their spine is over there. There are Mortal Kombat finishers less gory than this. Oh my god. I'm leaving. I'm going to walk this way, away from what looks like the center of a Dynasty Warriors campaign and not be brutally eviscerated by a bone of a junkie. A junkie? Apparently I tried to say jawbone of a donkey, but I, I didn't want to say too many syllables. I'm just like, what the fuck? And then, of course, the whole thing with Delilah, where she's like, oh, tell me your weakness. And then she does the thing and then has armed people come in to try to murder her. Not only that, she's part, like... He literally marries a woman who is actually part of a group of people that he's been fighting who all want to kill him and have been planning to kill him. Just because, you know, he thinks she's really sexy. Then, she tells him, Tell me the secret of your power. And he makes a lie up about it. And then as soon as he tells her, and he falls asleep, she does the thing. And has armed guards come in and try to kill him. And he's like, Aha! I lied! I still have my superpowers! And then proceeds to brutally murder the guards who are going to kill him. And then completely forgives his wife. Like, I'm not saying he should kill her. I'm just saying, maybe you should have got a divorce. Maybe you guys shouldn't be together. You know, she literally attempted to murder you. And it wasn't even just a once-off. She kept asking him. And he kept telling her made-up bullshit. Like, oh, tie me in this way. Or use reeds. Or do this or do that. And she would do it and then have people come in with the attempt to murder him. And he kept staying with her. And he kept... And it was multiple times. Again and again and again. And he'd be asleep next to her. And he'd wake up. And he'd... I mean... Why? Why would you stay with a, anyone like that? I mean, if you have a partner who is trying to hurt you, get out. I don't know, like I said, I don't care what gender you are, what orientation. I mean, if you're two guys and you know your partner is becoming violent to you, get the fuck out. You shouldn't be in an abusive relationship. If you're two women, you know, you're two lesbians and your partner is becoming abusive to you, get the fuck out. You know, abuse doesn't... Like, it, it's not an issue of even gender or orientation. You know, if your partner is being hurtful to you, if your partner is hurting you, get the fuck out of there. Especially if they're trying to have you murdered. Oh my god. You know... One, just verbal and psychological abuse, gaslighting, manipulation. That stuff's fucked up. You have that sort of stuff going on. Then you get the fuck out of that relationship. Get out. Get out and never fucking go back to it. Oh my god. Same time. Physical abuse is even worse. Granted, the non-physical abuse doesn't leave visible scars and sometimes may not be as easily recognized. At the same time, you know, abuse is abuse. And you shouldn't abuse people, let alone somebody that you care about or somebody, and you certainly shouldn't be abused by somebody that you care about who you think cares about you. If they're abusing you, then they don't care about you. Get the fuck out. And I know there are some people that stay in those situations because they either have low self-esteem or they're just, they've been through too much themselves. At which point is just, you know, hopefully you can get help. But no matter what, if your partner is cheating on you, if your partner is being abusive or controlling you, 
get out. You shouldn't be letting somebody hurt you like that. But yeah, he's just... His partner kept trying to have him murdered. And eventually he actually tells her the actual weakness. And she does it. And, you know, he's taken prisoner. His eyes are gouged out. He's chained up and used as a fucking circus attraction. Just why? It's just, I don't... It's just, there's so many things in the Bible, like, I'm like... What the fuck? And even then, it's just like... And I know the Bible's been translated a lot of times. And I know at one point, you know, back in pre-Renaissance times, you know, the Bible was written in Latin, and only the priests knew how to speak it Latin, and the people couldn't read Latin or English. Or any, or read at all, and a lot of times the priests would just straight up lie about what was said in the Bible so that they could tell the people whatever the fuck they wanted to tell them. Or a lot of times, you know, the church might impose restrictions on the king and the actual government, or the government might actually impose restrictions on what the preachers could say. I mean, there's a reason we have a separation of church and state. I mean, both things are organizations of power, and a lot of times. Power can corrupt people, and power can be abused. And a lot of times, unfortunately, a lot of politicians lie. I mean, look at a lot of politicians in every country of the world, and even leaders, same way of religious leaders, would take... I mean, there's politicians in every country where the politicians are corrupt. And usually, you know, people that are going to want to abuse power are going to seek it. So that's why a lot of times, most people that are aren't positions of power are corrupt because usually the corrupt people that want to abuse power are the ones going out and trying to get it. So, but then again, that's the whole point of the Constitution. Like, that's the point of the Constitution of America. Is that people are assholes. People are going to want to abuse the power. People in power are going to want to abuse power, and people who want to abuse power are going to seek power. The whole purpose of the Constitution of America is to try to limit it so that even if we do have bad people in political offices, that it limits their powers so that it prevents bad people in positions of power from abusing that power. Does it work? Not necessarily. But I'll say this. America, like, the thing that is great about America is, one, that the freedom of speech, that we should be able to talk to each other without murdering each other, that we should be able to respect each other's opinions. But it's also that, you know, the, our Constitution is about we're supposed to have a law that keeps people in power from passing laws that are unjust that's supposed to prevent things like slavery and murder or tyranny. Does it work? Obviously not entirely. But America and the Constitution and what we have tried has been a very bold thing. And the idea behind the United States of America is really something that has never been fully tried in the history. I mean, it's a great experiment. You know, the idea of trying to make a country that respects the values of the individuals so that, you know, the idea is everybody is free and that, you know, the people in power shouldn't be able to abuse it and that if other people try to harm other people, you know, the people without power are protected from people that want to abuse power. Does it work? Well, it's a system that still relies on people. So, and people do fuck up. But the Constitution is great. Simply because of the idea it represents. The idea that we can have a system of government 
to where even if we do wind up getting bad people in political offices who want to abuse power, the idea is that the Constitution is supposed to limit that so that they can't do bad things with that power. It's not perfect, but the idea is true that we want to try to make a better world. A world where everyone can respect each other. A world where it doesn't matter who the king is at that time, who the president is at that time. It doesn't matter who's rich, who's in power, or what their beliefs are. That the people in power can't just decide to like commit a genocide or enslave or disenfranchise a certain group. That you can't just choose to go to war over no reason. That you can't pass unjust laws. Again, there's lots of contention in politics whether or not that's actually functioning that way. But that is the idea of the Constitution, is to respect the autonomy of the individual, for us to be able to live peaceful lives, for us to be able to just all coexist, and no matter who is our leader, no matter who is our senators or public representatives or governors or mayors, no matter who the king is, no matter who the prime minister is, you know, the idea is that regardless of whoever is in government, whoever is in power, that it limits that power so that they don't do anything bad with it. That's the idea. That's the goal. The goal is to protect the common man from the abuse of people with power. So that there is a government that can handle things, but also will not abuse that power. Because, I mean, you can't just have straight up anarchy. There has to be a system of government. But at the same time, the whole point of the Constitution is to limit that government so that it doesn't do anything corrupt with that power. I usually try to avoid talking about this sort of stuff, or whether it's politics or religion, just because I get way too into it, and I just can't seem to stop talking about it. Then again, I'm the same way with anime. At least that's more pleasant for me to talk about, and it's not so exhausting. I feel like I want to nap. Main thing I really want to say is I just want everyone to be nice to each other. I don't want anyone to kill or hurt each other. So many people are so hateful to each other. And why is that? I believe in God, but I disagree with a lot of preachers and pastors. Most of them feel I deserve to burn in hell. I mean, hell. I, I don't agree with them the way they want me to. I find Futanari attractive, so a lot of preachers feel I'm a bad person because I'm not as heterosexual as they want me to be. It's like, oh no, this person is technically bisexual. Oh no, they're a bad person, blah, 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 like, great. Thank you for hating me, for not fitting into the, you know, the box that you want me to fit into. Well, like I said, I know, pre I know preachers and pastors that do it just for money. I know some that do it for power. I know some that literally do it because they enjoy being able to control people or tell them what to think. Or because it gets them special privileges. Or they get money. Or people are nicer to them for it. Then again, I mean, I can kind of understand that. I want people to be nice to me. I mean, heck, I'd like a hug. Of course, I know people that are religious because they're terrified of hell, or because it's what's been forced down their throat. I know people that have read the Bible over and over, but it's all they read. I know people that literally their entire life is just, they wake up, read the Bible, go to church, go to work, go to church, read the Bible, and sleep. And every chance they get at work, they'll try to read the Bible. And it's just that's their entire life. They don't care about their family, they don't care about friends, about 
their husbands or wives or children or parents. They don't care about right or wrong. They literally just care about what's in the Bible. That's it. It's like so fucking close-minded. And another thing is that they, they only read the Bible. Like I know some people, like they have probably read hours every day for years, if not decades, of the Bible, and yet have not read a single sentence of anything else. Not even just like mythology and stuff. I mean, they won't even read a book, regardless of the subject. To them, the only thing that's worth reading is the Bible. I'm like, that's... That's it's very excessive, guys. It's very excessive, and I don't feel that's emotionally healthy. Plus, I feel like it's very easy for people that do that to kind of lose perspective, you know, of not just reality, but just of being able to see things from another person's perspective in regard to how are other people feeling? Why are people making the decisions they make? Like, and here's another thing. A lot of these people, like, don't seem to be very... Like, what about the people in your lives? Like, you're not really there for them, are you? I mean, it seems very closed-minded. And they're not willing to accept anyone else's opinion. They literally feel that you believe things the way I tell you to believe, in the way I believe, or you're wrong. And I'm like, it sounds like there's absolutely zero room in there for compromise, for understanding, hell, for even empathy or compassion or mercy. I mean, at that point, it just sounds like people that are just devoid of just kindness. And it's just... It's both sad and it's just terrifying. And I know a lot of times scary situations could always exacerbate it. I mean, take the movie The Mist, where that one woman starts spouting off the religious stuff that we need to, like, the, uh, what? Not excommunicate, like I said. I forget the word for it. I should remember it. I'm constantly forgetting words. I'm sorry, guys. But she basically starts telling people they need to start, like, killing people and sacrificing them to monsters to appease, you know, for their sins. I'm like... And people are going along with it. One, because if you don't, then you're going to be the person sacrificed. And two, you're terrified, you're scared, you're angry. And I'll say this, emotions are important to human beings. We can't be just logical fucking computers. We can't just be beings of emotion either. If you exist just on the emotional level and don't think about things logically, then you're going to do horrible things. In the same regard, if you think about things just logically and don't think about things emotionally, you're going to do horrible things. In order for a human being to be, you know, a human, we have to have the capacity to have emotions and logic and free will. But a lot of times, I mean, people panic. I mean, here's the thing. We all have that in us. We all have the capacity to have psychotic breaks. We all have the capacity to have a breakdown. We all have, go through sadness and stuff. I mean, that's good. It's good to have sad feelings and angry feelings. It's part of what helps keep us balanced. The problem is, you know, you're over... And it's sometimes, yeah, no matter how emotional you are, you're going to go through periods of being numb. <coughs> now, granted, some people, certain types of depression might bounce back and forth between being excessively numb and apathetic and feeling nothing and caring about nothing to just manic episodes to where they're just overly energetic about it and they just their emotions are just overflowing and they just won't stop just spewing it into their mind and out everything to where like it's everything that exists to where sometimes it'll feel like you just want to shut down and that you just can't even think, and that every small thing is overwhelming, and that you can't, you just want silence and quiet. Other times, you, you need to hear like 20 different things at once, and just everything is pulling you in every direction, and you're thinking about everything at the same time. And you might be listening to 10 different types of music, and you're just very energetic, very 
And even if it's the point where, like, you're technically still exhausted and you need to sleep, you, you feel like just, you need to stay awake, you need to keep going, you need, to, you need to keep talking, you need to keep thinking about this. You need to keep trying to play your guitar, you need to keep trying to try to draw this. Oh, you have to finish the story. You have to try to read this, you have to try to understand this. And it's just, you know, it's... You have to be able to balance how you feel and how you... But I'd say, above all, regardless of how you feel, the most important thing at all times, regardless of how you feel or how you think, whether emotionally or logically, is to have compassion, to have mercy, to have kindness. That's the most important thing. I'm not saying that in a situation where if I was pissed off, I wouldn't act out in anger. I probably would. I'm human. We all are. But I'm just saying, it's important to have a balance. There's nothing wrong with having anger feelings. There's nothing wrong with having sad feelings. There's nothing wrong with occasionally having an overabundance of emotion. And there's nothing wrong with occasionally having, you know, no emotion. It's okay to have any of those, but you shouldn't be stuck in just one at a time. Now, maybe you shouldn't be as erratic as I am, but, you know, at the same time, I would never have heard it. And, and if I ever did, it would be something in self-defense, or defense of another person, mainly just because I see somebody causing pain, and I don't want them to, I don't want innocent people to get hurt. But a lot of times there's people that just overreact to things and they do horrible things to one another. I mean, the people that were Nazis actually thought they were the good guys. And it's just... There's no way that you can really look at it from our modern perspective would like agree with that. A lot, and of course, a lot of them didn't even know about the full extent of some stuff going on. But you know, it's just—I don't know where I was going with any of this. I'm sorry, guys. I guess the main point is this: I believe in God, but there's a lot of things in the Bible that don't make sense to me. And there's a lot of things that I don't agree with. And I've met a lot of religious people that I don't agree with how they view things. I don't agree with what they say. And many of them have outright expressed to me that I should die, that I should go to hell, that I'm a terrible person for feeling the way I am. Heck, I talked to one uh, religious leader and this man this man honestly believes that the greatest failing in the world is that there isn't enough religious extremism. And this man's a Christian. This man is a Christian. He's in a position of authority within a church. And yet this man said to me with 100% sincerity that the biggest failing in this world is that there isn't enough religious extremism. His also main criticism of me was that I'm just too compassionate, I'm too nice to people, that I'm against the ideas of violence, that, you know, I respect people like Martin Luther King and what they stood for, and that apparently from his point of view, I'm a failure of a human being, because I'm not aggressive enough or violent enough to other people for not sharing my viewpoint. And it's just... To me, it's just... That sounds like utter lunacy. I understand I'm not emotionally well. I understand I have a lot of depression and a lot of psychological issues. I understand I'm just a very lonely person that just... <laughs> wants a sexy cat girl. <laughs> and to watch anime and play video games and talk to people and be part of the YouTube community. But even to me, somebody who, because like I said, I may be emotionally depressed and erratic at times, 
but I've never hurt anyone, and I never would. Well, I said, unless it's an issue of self-defense, or having to protect somebody else from being hurt, I don't want to ever hurt anyone. And... Granted, I enjoy sparring. Like, I, I, I'm terrible at martial arts. But I've tried a little bit of sparring with people that do karate and boxing. And I enjoy that, but I'm not trying to hurt the other person. I just want to improve my skills. And I hope that maybe I can help them hone theirs. And they get better, too. I do it not as a way of trying to hurt people. More as a way of... The way, like, you sit and play Halo with a friend. You're not playing, you know your free-for-all death match in Halo because you hate somebody. You're doing it because you just want to have fun, and you want them to have fun too. You're doing it as a bonding experience. You're doing it as friends. You're doing it as just having fun and having a laugh together. I mean, the worst thing you're going to do in that situation is play a game of Dungeons & Dragons with somebody and laugh at them because their half one character is riding a dog with a horse while eating some French toast and listening sublime. You know? It's it's not like anything's out of malice. It's just... Like... Just having friends. Just interacting with people in a way that's... kind. That's appreciative of just valuing the social interaction in a way that neither of you has any malicious intent toward one another. You just you want to be happy and you want them to be happy too. And you would never actually hurt each other. I don't know. It's, it's kind of like you play a game Magic the Gathering. You're not really caring who really wins. And you definitely wouldn't like be upset because you lose over something and they win. You just enjoy playing the game with somebody. You value them and they value you. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm not even sure really what I was talking about. Man, I need a fucking flow chart next to me. Like I, I need to like buy a giant fucking whiteboard and write notes. So I remember like how the fuck I got to this part of the conversation. This is like the benefit of me like talking to real human beings and not just talking to my computer like this. Because while on the one hand I can drop the filter entirely with the computer, is that usually I'm able to rein in the way I have conversations with people by gauging, you know, reading their body language, reading their facial reactions, listening to what they say, listening to the tone and inflection of their voice. Um, listening to the topics that they're talking about. Because that way, sometimes if I start or to like want to go off topic, I can just listen to them. And like, okay, that's the topic I'm going with. I'll try to stay focused on that. And, it, it, you know, I'm able to maintain a much more coherent conversation with other people. But when it's just me talking to myself, it's just a fucking echo chamber in my head. And I'm just... There's really nothing to keep me on that one rail. Like if I'm around other people, I'll usually adapt to how the people around me are speaking. So that I can be on like the same wavelength they are, and I can actually carry the same conversation they are. So that I can try to present my argument in the most palpable way possible. At the same time, I understand well, the way I'm talking right now, it's got to seem like a fucking incoherent mess of words everywhere, where a lot of it may seem like it's repeating. A lot of it may seem like it's disconnected. A lot of it, like, this isn't a good way to have a conversation or convince anyone of anything. Not that I'm trying to. For me, this is just... Opening my mind out, letting you guys peer inside. This is just what goes on in my head. Without any regard to, you know, what you guys think, and what kind of person I am. Because at the end of the day, 
I mean, you're either going to be somebody who thinks that I'm a bad person because I'm not sharing your views, or that I'm just a dumb moron who can't carry a single coherent thought. And I can't say you'd be wrong. By all accounts, I'm a bad person. And I'm dumb. And I'm worthless. Honestly, no one would actually care if I was gone. If they do, it's usually just a different reason. It's not because of me or anything. Man, there are people I care about. There are some people that do care about me and some people that I mean a lot to. I love my son very much. I hope he loves me. I try to be the best possible dad I can be to him. If nothing else, he at least knows he's loved and cared about. And I'm proud of him. And everyone who is a family member or a friend of me, I try to be as nice to them as possible. But there's always an extenuating circumstance with that. I suppose some people would probably describe me as a severely paranoid individual. Some people could even probably go as far as to describe me as a paranoid schizophrenic, though I would deny it. And I would say I am completely sane that there is that there is everything's fine. Everything's perfectly fine. But... I'm not sure where to go in this conversation anymore. As I stare into fucking Moskis' face. I didn't plan to have to stare at this fucking face this fucking long. I'm just supposed to be like... Fucking music video for Ozzy Osbourne's Miracle Man is four minutes and seven seconds. This video is three and a half fucking hours. Apparently, when I ramble, I ramble. This is why I avoid these kind of conversations because I can't stop talking about them. Because my mind can be a little obsessed about it. I can't have a bit of an addictive personality. I mean, you guys seen how many I play uh, Isaac videos sometimes? Where even if it's a week, I'm working like fucking 80 hours. Like, I'll basically play it for hours myself and sleep like an hour or two tops before I go back to work with my physical manual labor job. So, then again, it's like, even when I do have time off, it's just... It's... At times, it's hard to go to sleep. But then again, at one point, I had a spouse that, in the end, became a psychotic monster that I was actually terrified of her for very good reasons. And even then, aside from the things that she said and did, there's also the fact that anytime I did fall asleep, she would either do something or break something or shake me awake or just start screaming at me and, like, what the then again, I mean, I've dealt with a lot of people out there in the world that have attempted to hurt me or do terrible things to me. And, I mean, I, I live alone, and yet I still lock my bedroom door. I, I stack dumbbells in front of it. I put chairs in front of it. I use alarms. I have things for self-defense. Just in case. I mean, I have... I have precautions in place. Is it excessive? Yes. Yes, it is. But it's at least grounded in things that have a very justified reason for me to have a reaction. Like I said, on the one hand, perhaps more reason I maybe should see a th fucking therapist. On the other hand, to a fucking therapist, what a, I'd probably just be a fucking ATM to them. Just be a paycheck. Like they would actually care about my thoughts and feelings. Like they would actually care about what I would have to say. All I'd need to them is a fucking wall walking wallet at that point, right? I mean, like they would actually care about what I'm saying. 
And okay, what would the fucking diagnosis be? Oh, you went through this one psychological thing that made you very sad, and now you can't stop thinking about it? Oh, well, we're going to give you drugs. We want you just to be overly medicated, drug up now. Like, I don't want to just treat things with fucking chemicals like that. Just... Worst thing I'm gonna do is make a cringy video on YouTube, or maybe lay in bed and want to nap all day, or be awake all day, and you know, either play a video game, watch an anime, make a let's play video. Or sometimes I would just walk around town, look at the trees, sit out in the field, look at the clouds, try to play my guitar. Try to draw. Try to date. Um, try to hang out with people. Go to parties. Even though I don't drink, I usually go to that because I'm trying to be social. Trying to talk to other people. Trying to be interactive with others. I don't know. I'm just really bad at communicating. I'm sorry, guys. Um, like I said, there's. This is why most people that do YouTube videos like this sort of thing, they would actually like have a script or some shit so they could just follow it and read and be like, yes, I've already mapped out everything I'm going to say so it's as coherent as possible and it's just a list of fucking sound bites. Me? I'm just a dude sitting in a fucking folding chair my ass hurting because I'm sitting on the fucking edge of it now. Yeah. I don't know if you guys heard that. That was me stretching and my hips popping. I'm 34. I'm not that fucking old. Why do my bones pop like I'm a fucking elderly person? Why do I make old man noises when I stand up? But yeah. I've literally had a religious leader tell me that they feel the greatest failing in the world is that there's not enough religious extremism. That they feel the world will be a happier and better and more peaceful place if every person on the planet were a religious extremist. And I'm just like, what? And this is, it's not just some random dude off the street. I'm talking about somebody that is a religious leader. Somebody who's in a position of authority in a church. You know, people look to this person as an authority figure, as a teacher, as a person that tells them the difference between right and wrong. As a person who is considered, basically, for all intents and purposes, a wise sage of wisdom who will teach the common man how they should live their lives and how God wants us to be. And their greatest opinion is that everyone in the world should be a religious extremist. And I'm just like, one, what the hell goes into making a person like that? Like, how does a person come to that conclusion? I mean, in any way, I mean, take religious extremism. You have the hip hypocritical people that just use it for money that don't care about God and just are trying to get rich and benefit themselves and there's other people that do like Mosgus from Berserk because like I said I don't think he was a liar or hypocrite about anything but he definitely wasn't what I would call a good person and yet I would say Mosgus would be the exact definition of a religious extremist to, but there have been people like Mosgus all throughout history with every faith and even of groups of people that didn't have faiths. I mean, it's very easy for an atheist to even become the same. Because in the end, regardless of what path you're on, whether it's left or right, or Christian, Jew, anything, even if it's a non-religious group, even a group of atheists will find something to do. It's not an issue of religion. It's not an issue of ideology. It's an issue of human nature. There are going to be some people that do that. 
same as there are some people out there that are going to bully people or hurt people or cause grievous harm to others and not have that compassion or mercy for them. And it's just... I just don't see the point. I don't see the point hurting people. I understand that if I was pissed off and angry at somebody, I might. I might hurt somebody. But again, that would be out of anger. That would be because they did something really bad. Because they hurt me. It wouldn't be... And I'll say this, I enjoy playing Grand Theft Auto like anyone else. Maybe more so. But that's just digital constructs. It's, I mean, one thing, if it was even a sentient AI or anything, then that would be wrong because it's alive. But in that regard, it's just... They don't have thoughts or feelings. They're, it's a computer. Like, even then, it's not like... It'd be one thing if it was a sentient AI. Because even then, you know... It still has rights. If you're alive, you have feelings. It doesn't matter if you're a robot made out of flesh and bones, or circuits and metal. But that's a whole different fucking subject. Main thing is, if you're sentient, you know, you deserve respect. You deserve to be, you know, treated with kindness. But I'm saying this, if I drive on the fucking sidewalk in a fucking GTA game, it's a video game. I have played so much from God of War and Doom and shit. It's... It's the equivalent of breaking roof tiles in a karate class. You know? It's not like you're actually hurting anyone. And it's a good way to have emotional catharsis. It helps you to deal with your thoughts, deal with your feelings, and to be happier. And honestly... It wouldn't be for the best for somebody to not have those thoughts. You know, it's part of being human. But you have to have control and balance. And of course, a lot of times, sometimes, any excesses that occur are usually a reaction to something bad that has happened to you. You know, it's usually a reaction and it's just... It's a way for the human mind to adapt. main thing I'm trying to say is just... I believe in God, but I don't believe in the way a lot of people are just the way they go about it, the way they treat other people. It seems like nothing but cruelty. I don't like it. I don't like the way people treat each other. I sing this song. <sighs> I'm surprised my PS4 didn't actually shut off and go to sleep this whole time. Let's rewind. I'm actually gonna sing the damn song now. Oh, by the way, actually go watch the video, like Ozzy Osbourne doing this. It's a good music video. Back when Ozzy was younger, so I mainly like the guitar in it. But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I, was, I, I just kept talking, guys. This is why I avoid this kind of subject. Because I just I just don't stop talking. And here's the thing, a lot of times when I'm in public, it's just... A lot of times I'm working, I don't have time to talk or anyone to talk to. And if I do want to talk to somebody, it's... You know, I have to talk about work, like, okay, we need to do this to adjust this part of the machine, or alter this part of the program, we need to attach this. You know, it's my job. It's just... It's not even talking about anything like... Honestly, if I had a choice to talk about anything I really wanted to talk about, I just like to sit around a table with an ice cold Pepsi and talk about Dragon Ball Z with people. That's what I want. I just want to sit comfortably, have an ice cold Pepsi, and you know, talk with some people about Dragon Ball Z, have a sexy Neko girlfriend. You know? That's another thing. If Nekos and stuff like that existed, would racism be worse or better? Like, would everyone be like, oh, okay, there's now Nekos and everything, and they must not care about racism anymore? Or would people become more racist? I don't know. In general, I would say most people in America just 
don't care about that shit. But of course, there are some people out there that are just that way. I don't know why people hate each other so much. Like I said, I feel like it must be like people had something bad happen. Even then, it's just, I don't like it. I don't like people treating each other like that. And I sure as hell might not say sorry myself, because I've never heard it. I've never, you know, I've never done anything wrong to anyone. But, and of course, you know, I'm not going to stand for somebody doing something wrong to me. But, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't like the way people are to each other. I don't like people hurting each other. I just like everyone to be friends and nice to each other. I mean, we can play like, we can all sit around and watch like a Hellraiser movie together or, you know, play some Halo and Call of Duty and stuff and cuss at a video game. But there's no reason to actually hurt each other in the real world. There's no reason to actually cause people pain or suffering. I don't know why people hurt each other. I don't like it. Okay, I'm gonna sing this song and end the video before it goes in. Before I break the fucking four hour mark. I'll try to bring Google back up. Alright. Where are the lyrics for Ozzy? There we go. My teeth and lips feel weird from all the talking I've done. I almost feel like the top right part of my lip is going out. What the fuck is that about? Anyway, let's go and sing this. I can't sing, by the way, in case you forgot, because it was like three and a half hours ago I mentioned that I can't sing. I'm terrible. This is terrible karaoke. I have no idea what to even title this anymore because it doesn't. Because the karaoke took fucking like almost four hours to get to. Is he gonna play? There we go. Looking for a miracle man Tells me your lies Looking for a miracle man Man in the skies I don't know where he'll come from And I don't know where he's been What that matters is he here now Cause it's so sick I busted. I busted. Today I saw a miracle man on TV crying. Such a hypocritical man, born again dying. He don't know where he's going. He know where he been. Where is it? Is it? Our eyes are on the screen. Got busted. Got busted. Got busted. Got busted. Got busted. Got busted. 
I've seen Ozzy in concert once. That was like, what, 2015 or something? I'm not sure. I can't remember. It was one of the Oz Fests. You ever get a chance, I would say, try to see him, but I mean... Definitely try to watch all the music videos. I'm enjoying it. I'm watching it right now. Can't remember the name of the guitar that Zach Wilde's using. <laughs> Devil with a crucifix. Brimstone and fire. He needs another card of this. He's higher and higher. And Jimmy got busted. With his pants down. For Frankie Richardson's self righteous clown. Got busted, miracle man. Got busted, miracle man. You know, at one point I thought carnal fish were like cuttlefish. Right. Enjoy music. I know. I like to read and listen to just about everything. I need to go to the bathroom. It's a good music video. Go check it out, guys. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video before we do break that fucking four hour mark. I'm sorry I was. I rambled so fucking much. I. I that's why I avoid certain subjects, because I guess I can't stop talking. But it's just. I get, like. And there's times where I'm at work and stuff, I have to go like 10, 12 hours without really talking to anyone. I'm basically just quiet all the time. And it's just, I go such long periods of time without talking to anyone or even using my voice for anything. And then when I actually get a chance to talk about something and I start getting into it, then I just, once I start getting into it, I can't stop. I need to keep talking about it. And it's just, I'm sorry. But I hope you guys had a wonderful day. And honestly, if you spent like four hours listening to me ramble like this, I mean, thank you. I mean, I don't know what, why you found it so interesting. I mean, I imagine I'm boring as shit. And I, I, I just rambled about shit. And this is four hours. I mean, it's hard to find time these days. I mean, what? Were you just listening to this passively when you were playing Halo? Like, is this something to do while listening to Halo multiplayer? Like, I don't know. I considered Halo Infinite, but I don't think my computer would handle it. I mean, it couldn't handle Spyro the Dragon. It's kind of weird. But it handled Code Bane, but I don't fucking understand. Hopefully it will handle Kingdom of Fighters about 15 when it comes out. And of course, Super Meat Boy Forever will come out January 10th. They delayed that. Anyway, bye guys.